forever. Dog. Warning, the following podcast contains rhinestone studded clothing, strip mall wax figures, an extremely safe Santa photo op, and a rock and roll city? Jesse Farrar joins us to talk Opryland, so get ready to hoot and holler. It's podcast, The Ride. Welcome to Podcast the Ride, the podcast about theme parks that's more fun than playing a game of Family Feud against the Statler Brothers. I'm Scott Gardner, and uh, hey, Jason Sheridan, come on down. I, I'm here. Uh, yes, it's a, a historic Family Feud game. Yeah, yeah, will. yeah. Uh, um, I figure we get it out of the way right at the top because everybody's going to be demanding. You can't, you can't talk Opryland without the famous Statler Mandrell Family Feud. Uh, uh, Mike, I'm sure you got a myriad of thoughts about that. Mike Carlson. I certainly do. Everyone I ran into while I was uh, walking the dog today have been saying, you got to talk about this, okay? You got to do the family feud story. And I said, I'll get it. I'll get there. But I don't want to reveal all yet, I think. And what a story it is. It's definitely not just uh, that it (laughs) happened. It's Mm -hmm. way beyond that. Uh, uh, I'm really excited for today's episode. And I think I texted you guys some version of this thought, which is that I, I think that We've done it very uh, seldom, but I think that when I think that good things happen when Podcast the Ride goes south, uh, not when we go, not when we fail, but when we go to the the south of the country. I think about Hard Rock Park in South Carolina. I think about Dog Patch USA in Arkansas, and uh, I'm so excited to uh, to head south now uh, to Nashville, Tennessee, to talk about Opryland USA. And joining us uh, from Tennessee. Uh, from the Go Off Kings, from your Kickstarter sucks, and from the new podcast on Stitcher Premium, good morning, good morning, Jesse Farrar. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Hey, here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so excited to talk about a thing native to your uh, neck of the woods. Uh, you had mentioned Dolly, uh, Dollywood as well, but we have a thing I said about Dollywood. I'm like, I think we have to go. I think we like we do. We deserve that. Uh, Dollywood deserves our physical presence for us to do we an episode. We need to do a live show at Dollywood <laughs> mm-hmm. before we, like we need to like in one of the theaters that houses like Civil War <laughs> shows or something. <laughs> we need to do a show there. Yeah, I had actually, I so. when we were talking about what to do, yeah, I, I, I said, well, I don't. You know, I'm not I'm not a theme parks guy, so get the get the knives out now and slash my belly open. <laughs> um, I and and actually listening to your show has helped me work out some of my feelings on theme parks uh, and this kind of thing because you guys, I think you have a really good attitude about it. I'm not here just to blow smoke up your asses, okay? <laughs> Better Please? not be. Please. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's true that theme parks, like everywhere else, are nightmares for a lot of reasons, especially right now, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's there's a lot of shit to hate about it. There's so much shit to hate about going to one of these places. Um, I don't have to enumerate all of it, but I mean, it's 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 just unbridled capitalism. It's not fun to see that. It's become an experience for, if not purely the rich, then the people with enough disposable income to mm-hmm. say, you know, like... A few hundred dollars a pop just to get in the door is no big deal for me. Um, And it's also just, I mean, so much of the stuff is junk. I mean, so much of it's the IP that you have to wander through in all these places (laughs) is garbage. I don't care about any of this shit. However. What do you mean? Minions and uh, (laughs) um, getting to watch Vin Diesel fly a helicopter. uh... I mean, how many things are there? How many parks or rides are there dedicated to properties with one movie? That's not, you have to have more than one movie to get a ride, don't you? Am I, am I out of my mind? Mm-hmm. This is an interesting it, point. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, sometimes people, sometimes a movie gets lucky. There's an amount of money a, a, a company, a corporation has to put into a ride, and this movie just happened to have just come out, and they go, oh, that thing just came out, maybe, maybe right. we'll use that. So right. if it gets lucky, yes, it can be. That's one the water thing. world situation. Like it was ready at the time. I don't know that years down the line you'd sink a lot of money into water world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, there is something that when I've been, 
I I find to appreciate there. Um, you know, I've taken my kids to uh to Disney World uh out here on my side of the country and we went um my wife and I went to the what 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 what's the av- avatars in the animal kingdom, right? Yes, that's where in the that's animal where that kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So we went there and I got sick um, and had some big nasty drinks and uh, made a fool of myself by taking a picture that now all my friends mock me with. Um, and I guess probably will for the rest of my life. And that's fine. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's... yeah. I also have it ready to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason pulled it up. Jesse, oh, two, there. Jesse, two drinks. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Um, and and that, you know, and I and that's not it's nothing I enjoyed, but I appreciate that somebody took this much time. Look, hey, somebody put some effort into this shit. You know, that you guys really, you made it an attempt at doing something here, and it's pretty uh, cool. And my kids like it. So there's sure. stuff that I like about parks without, I can't roll with the punches. You know what I mean? I can't get on the coaster and whip my neck around and all that other kind of stuff, but I can kind of bask in it and go, okay, somebody did a really good job on this rock texture for this ride. Here and also go. they, ha- there's like a good hot dog or something. That's, that's where I'm at with, with this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not too far yeah, I mean, from where speaking, we're at. Yeah, yeah. You're speaking our language here. We, we did a whole episode about fake rocks. <laughs> right. We love fake rocks. Fans of fake, so, it's yeah, an amazing yeah. fake tree that you were in front of uh, in this photograph. The, the tree of life. Yes. It's no mere tree. There's many animals carved into the, the bark of the fake tree. The fake bark of the fake tree. Right. There, yeah, there are a lot of very talented artists and creative people that uh, have given their lives to these corporations in the, as a tribute. Their whole creativity <laughs> is now given to a corporation. And it's nice to see some of their work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And yeah, and with with Dolly. So my point was, is when when you asked me what, you know, hey, what what kind of what do you have feelings on for for in this world? And I threw out Dollywood because I have been there one time. And to me, that is the equivalent of caring about something enough to talk about it. What I didn't realize is it's still open and you guys like it. So you can just go and have a real experience there and have stuff to talk about. That didn't occur to me that that would be a possibility, but of course, and you should go, you know, mm-hmm. when this is yeah. all over. Oh yeah. Believe, believe me. Uh, um, Jesse, I... can I ask, how do we, um, how do you get to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee? Can you tell me? <laughs> I have always yeah, wondered so hard. That. Is it fly into Nashville and then drive? Is that the right. easiest course? Well, uh, so the the Knoxville airport, uh, which would be fairly close, is, is a regional airport. Okay. Um, so if you are going, you're not going to be flying from L.A. to Knoxville mm-hmm. unless something drastic has changed. Or if you're going to be on a plane that will provide such a horrible experience, you'd never want to <laughs> do it again. So, yeah, you would probably fly into Nashville and then drive the three and a half or four hours up there. Or, uh, honestly... North Carolina would probably be the way to go and then drive the backwards. So you go over it and then come back the other uh, direction. So it's mm. not it's not super easy, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what's uh, been stopping me and other people I know is like se- seemingly the difficulty of going. And then also the rumor that it is a, uh, at least past a certain hour, that it is a dry uh, town. I don't know if you can confirm or deny that. Oh, you know, I don't know. Um, Pigeon Forge itself being dry. I'm not sure. Um, there are some quixotic laws in this area about that type of stuff. I mean, I think most people probably know that uh, the home of the Jack Daniels Distillery is it's a dry county, which is a little bit uh, strange. I didn't know but, that, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's very yeah. bizarre. Yeah, it's very strange. I think you can get... I'm not sure. Can you get samples there of the of the whiskey? You may be able to get a sample there, but not you, you're not, not like not able to buy like a big commemorative bottle or something. Or they may have carved out an exception in those in those laws for for that area. Yeah, but um, but that still does happen out here. Blue laws are a real thing out here for sure. And East Tennessee is a very old and very uh, religious uh, part of the country, so that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Um. Hmm. And yet we want to go. After all this, we still <laughs> are wanting yeah, you, to go. You crave the hit, thrills. Yeah, I want to hit Branson too. If I'm a, I know it's not super close, but just like do a whole, mm-hmm. yes. a whole dry loop, <laughs> a whole dry, a whole dry trip. 
Um, you might adopt that uh, method. You you might stay dry after you go. You'll realize there's Maybe something I'll stay to dry. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll do that. I mean, Branson, I feel like is a whole saga. <laughs> oh, is that a <laughs> daily? A uh, that, that, yeah. That's a that's a 19 part at least. We got to live there though for maybe a month. <laughs> it Opryland and Branson feel similar in that when I've read about them, it feels like I am, I am consume. I'm learning about like not alien culture, but aliens <laughs> trying to impersonate human culture, like. Yeah. Opry, Opry, the Grand Ole Opry is just a corner of country music that I am like, I just don't understand a mini Pearl and Hee Haw. Like, I just, I, it's, it's just a little alien to me, you know? I just didn't grow up with it in the Northeast. That's, I think that is like a really good way of putting how I feel about Opryland specifically, theme parks as a whole, but Opryland even more specifically because. Um, like I was alluding to earlier, this is clearly something that, and, and you can see this in all the videos, I'm sure you guys looked at the the rides and stuff that they had there and all of the kitsch and everything that was so crucial to what Opryland was all about. And the takeaway for me, even as someone who has lived here my whole life, is, well, you guys really put a lot of effort into this, but it was stupid. And I don't, it's not, <laughs> I don't, I didn't like it. Um, so that's not for me. Uh, you did a good job, but I don't care. Um, and that's, that's what Opryland is. That's what like Branson is. It's like a lot of people caring a lot about something that I might as well not even have encountered ever. And that's why I feel so alien. Like the, the corny level is just cranked up all the way, like big white leather boots and like, (laughs) I just, I don't want any part of this shit, you know? Yeah, all these places make me think of like lots of people kicking up their heels and skirts, which are red, white, and blue, and tasseled yeah. many times over. Like all these, like with b- b- between Branson and Opryland, there's like like uh, five thousand shows all told happening at any time, and the shows are like essentially public domain <laughs> songs. For the most yes. part. Yeah. And also that's supposed to be funny too. That's the other thing that's so alien about it is it's not just, that's not just like an entertainment, like uh, like you would go to the ballet and watch someone like with technical proficiency perform something you, you can't possibly imagine doing. It's also like, I mean, that's what a hoot nanny is, is someone like dancing a jig and you clap, but you're also laughing at the same time. So I don't really know. That isn't, that's like a weird emotion I don't have, you know, it's like <laughs> hooting and hollering. I don't know how to do that one. Hmm. Why are you laughing? Because people are like looking like fools. Yeah, because they're just kind of like, you know, they're getting, they're really, I, I don't know. I, I don't do it. I don't know how to, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. But clearly, when you see the pans to the audience of one of these shows, and like you said, the skirt goes up way high, it's like, like what a relief to see the skirt go up so high. That's so much fun. I just have to like exhort. You know, it's like mm. church. Well, or if like like a Will Rogers type came out in a starched white cowboy outfit and he he's like, I saw a senator standing next to a donkey. Which was the politician and which was the ass? And then just everyone <laughs>, laughs at that single joke for one hour straight. <laughs> I, I think I laugh. I think gro- <laughs> yeah, growing up, that was not a part of any entertainment, really. But I will say, the older I get, the more I like. Maybe my kitsch, my tolerance for love of and love of kitsch has just gone skyrocket. I've been, oh, excuse me, I can't speak. Uh, skyrocketed. But I get more and more interested in like old cl- hee haw clips. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this, Jesse. Mm. Do, do you know? Have you seen the Country Bear Jamboree? I'm familiar with the Country Bear Jamboree. Yes, I do. I know about that. It is. Uh, I mean, that's what a hoot is right there, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Like that's a, and this is, of course, probably sacrilegious to anyone who knows a lot about all these shows that, oh, your favorite one is the one where there's robot bears. <laughs> but it's a very good version of it, I find. There's jokes in it that I think are funny. I like the songs. So, like, I get how, like, this kind of a format could be fun. So I and then and, and look, we've built in, I think uh, we've built in a, a fail safe on this podcast where we like stuff if it's really good or if it's really bad. Right. <laughs> like there's almost <laughs> the same enjoyment we can uh, take from a show like that. So that's why I feel like going to Branson, like maybe we'll see a show that like, wow, that those songs are really good. Those were great performers. And then the other 90 percent of the shows were dog shit. And we love them <laughs> just as much. 
I'll say I learned about I do remember in college learning about like the Grand Ole Opry in the context of like an introduction to mass media and popular culture in America of like uh, I had an, an, a very old, very white professor who really wanted to tell us about jazz. Like he had a lot to tell us about jazz and uh, very, very la la land. But he would also like enlighten us into like uh you know muddy waters or robert johnson or like the grand Ole opry in terms of like they were pretty small and then they just got insanely popular and they had this massive radio wad- wattage where like there was a certain point where you could hear it anywhere in america with a radio so mm-hmm. like i i remember learning about it like on an intellectual level and like how it how it was important to the history of american media Mm-hmm. Some of the first like yeah. mass entertainment, uh, yes, essentially, yeah. yeah, and like with a way wider reach than anything uh, now for, would ever for have. Some co- yeah, for some context, the Grand Ole Opry, and I didn't realize this. Grand, it's kind of like the Groundlings, where <laughs> you were like, you had to be a member of it. You would have to kind of get like audition to get in, and then you would you could sort of be a member for as long as they would either keep you or if you left. And mm-hmm. it's still like fairly exclusive, um, but yeah, then it was like a radio show and yes, mm-hmm. yeah, other and, media. Yeah, and, it's a, it's a it's a phrase that means lots of different things, right? It's mm-hmm. a place. It's a it's yeah. It's like this echelon of country music society. It's like, I mean, it's like a proto hall of fame. I think in a certain way because, mm-hmm. like, the hall of fame is like downtown and Taylor Swift owns it or whatever the hell. But so this <laughs> so in a way the Grand Ole Opry is. A little bit different. Um, it also does now sit in the parking lot of a mall, which you know, <laughs> if we have time to talk about that, uh, that would be. Oh, good it might be mostly sort of, that. Um, uh, I was going to say a parking <laughs> lot in a mall. <laughs> this is podcast the ride. Yes. <laughs> well, that's well. Here, let me let me jump in with with some uh, dry expositional stuff because I think we have, what we haven't said maybe is Opryland USA was uh, outside of Nashville uh, from 1972 to 1997, and it was a a theme park that was uh, supposed to flesh out the surrounding area of the Grand Ole Opry Theater. Uh, Jason was talking a little bit about Grand Ole Opry, and Jesse was saying it's it's many things. I think I always thought until right now that it was a venue only, and what I didn't realize is that it was a, a radio show and a review that moved from place to place, uh, eventually landed at the Ryman Auditorium historic uh, venue, but that started falling into disrepair, and it would during the summer it get to be 120 degrees sitting in that <laughs> thing. So they needed something more updated, and they were talking about how to do this and where to do it. Um, and and whoever was putting all this together uh, went and visited Astro World, which we discussed several years ago. And uh, Astro World is a theme park that is sort of like fleshing out the adjoining area of the the Astro Dome. The Astro Dome's at the center. How do we make this more of an experience as a bunch of shops and hotels and a, a theme park? So what if we could do something like that? Uh, and for more information about Astro World, check out our episode about that. But obviously, beware, bad man, Nick Mundy. Uh, bad man, the bad man waits around <laughs> to every corner. Um, but uh, uh, besides all that, yes, it was like... Uh, yeah. How do we like make this more than just a theater? Uh, uh, this this has this would be a bigger experience and like a creating a whole little uh, community and city around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I uh was looking back into some of this stuff, uh, because I was, so I was, I guess I was ten when Opryland closed. Um, so it wasn't like this was a huge part of my childhood really i wasn't going there when i was like a preteen. i didn't work there as a teenager or any of that kind of stuff it was already gone by that point for me um but when i was looking back into this i thought it was funny to hear that same pitch of once we build this then we'll build all this stuff around it and 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 then it will be this hub of uh economy for the city and for these jobs and all this stuff which now I would only associate, basically only, I think, associate it with sports arenas and stadiums and stuff like that. This is the same pitch that they make now, chiefly as a way to get money from the city or county or state or whatever to, to help them build these massive places and defer their tax payments way into the future when they've already blown the place up and left town. But <laughs> I thought it was really funny to hear that pitched around what is essentially like 
like a roller coaster in the middle of the city. I, I just that was so weird. It's such a weird throwback to hear that this was this is what the rich guys, I guess, have always done this. Right. This is like, yeah, this is like L.A. Live at, by the Staples Center. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And what's that other? What's that nightmare one by the by the Anaheim? The do you even remember the name oh, anymore? The, the, well, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Not worst the, name. It's really good, but I can't think of it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's with so it many like uh, ones instead of eyes and exclamation points instead of everything. Uh, awful name. Um, these places are yeah always insane. I guess what you're describing, Jesse, is sort of like all right, one super rich guy leads the army uh like we're, we're gonna build a big arena or something and uh oh wait while i got the opportunity hey my 20 other rich friends want to come in the door real fast and uh yes. get in on this scam with me yeah they <laughs> these guys want to run the parking for the six blocks around this whole area you know this guy owns the construction company that's digging the footers for the arena and all this stuff and it's just a massive i mean it's it's grift it's uh, what else could it possibly be just on this massive scale um <laughs> But instead of covered in the cloak of this is this will be a fun thing to have on Sundays and then you know, the aforementioned Taylor Swift can come by twice a year and justify the box seats here. It's like, uh, oh, this will be cute because it's like country music or whatever. And I, I apparently the guys apparently the guy really cared about it. That was that's at least what's been written in the history books that he really cared about country music or whatever. And maybe he did. But it's hard to see the the complex itself as anything other than what it was, which was a moneymaker even until it closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this the CEO of Gaylord? Uh, is that the is that what we're describing? Yeah, that they took it over at a certain point, just like it's now been taken over by Marriott. Um, so it's changed hands, uh, I think, a number of times over the, over the years, the, the property up there, yeah. Yeah, there was a couple times where it's like I, I had to keep reading, like, histories of this because... You know, I, I feel like I was skeptical or I was suspicious. And it's like, oh, like you're saying, I think he did care about this place. But there there was a moment when I found the old logos where the tagline was the home of American music. And to their credit, they did try to have like uh, country and jazz and rock and roll. And they even seem to admit that like rock and roll was changed. Like they areas would try to change with the times a little bit. But now I feel like if something has a tagline, home of American music, I'm just like, oh, geez, what's this? Oh, no. <laughs> like, I'm just immediately terrified of what about what is about to happen. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's that's something I think about when I when I hear people complain about what it has become now, which, you know, in one sense, is, is it true now that it has become essentially, you know, a a, a generic you know, monstrosity, uh, a, a pay in to capitalism, uh, just a big nasty mall that you go and fart around in and eat d d bacon wrapped, whatever. I mean, yeah, it has, and that sucks. Um, and then it flooded and then they built it back up again, um, which is even grosser for some reason. Not that it was their fault they flooded, but the that's true. But when people say, they took this away from us. This was real Nashville. This is what Nashville was all about. This is before Nashville sold out. I fucking start getting really like grossed out by that because of the, to me, it's a very clear implication of what people really think about a city getting bigger and more diverse and more inclusive and wanting this this history to be constrained to one very particular thing, which is like, I mean... It's like white people shit. I mean, that's what it is. It's just and I'm and country music is great and it has a, a a place and all this other stuff. But when people are like, they took this away from us and they get like really upset about it. Now I'm now I'm out. You know, I'm I'm out on the whole. I'm you can be upset a little bit, but don't be. This can't be your whole life crusading for Opryland. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> No, hang on. Hey, they did have a now they had a roller coaster that looked like a, a big dragon's face and they carved <laughs> all the teeth isn't that something worth fighting for going to the mat yeah. for yeah you're right it is do a diddy city come oh, on yeah oh <laughs> come on yeah <laughs> that's a that's a paradise from the sound of it my america is do a diddy city nesty yeah. plunge <laughs> nesty plunge is that real uh, well okay so the dulcimer <laughs> splash <laughs> <laughs> Formerly the flume zoom, and for a brief period of time, the nesty splunge. That was the log ride. 
uh, in the park. <laughs> I have to give the, 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 this park credit because the ride names are all fun. That said, uh, I was a little shocked to discover that the roller coaster called the Hangman was rolled out in 1995. That seems far <laughs> too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of, I guess that's kind of gruesome, but you look at it and it kind of is like, it is, they named it right. You know, it is, you're, hang, you're yeah, a man you are hanging. hanging there. Yes. So, yeah. mm. I don't, didn't see a picture of the Hangman. I don't know what the Hangman's about. Why did they it's build like, a ride so close to it uh, being closed? Like, it was, it was closed two years later. Well, that's the other thing that is, I think, very interesting about this park is, like, all of the, like, lookbacks and after actions, no one is taking credit. No one has an answer for why it closed. It's, like, besides, mm. you know, like Jesse's talking about, like, corporates, corporations consolidating and stuff, there's no, like, oh, we wanted to do this instead, or, like, oh, there was safety incident, or, like, it, it, everyone honestly seems a little confused about why it closed. Yeah. Do we know, just to go back to Jesse's point, do we know, like, was there a big uproar when this closed? Was this like a Confederate monument being taken down when Opryland <laughs> closed and people were very upset about it? Or was it just like, oh, that's a shame? Like, what do we know? I don't remember contemporaneously with it happening that it was a big thing. Is it? Ju- yeah, because, of course, you look at all the videos or, or you do any kind of reading and there is that sort of. I don't know if you'd call it rose-colored glasses, but definitely the uh, prioritization, the the wistfulness about the past that is like really common. I mean, with essentially everything, we love fandoms and we love uh, we love our innocent childhoods and we love all the other shit that makes us go out of our fucking minds. But with theme parks in particular, right, that are aimed at pushing that button in your brain that that's the stuff that you like. I think there is a lot more of that with old rides. Or or old yeah, movies or or whatever that go by the wayside. I think people feel that way more more often about this than other stuff. But I don't remember at the time. I mean, there wasn't like a protest or anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think it just I think it just quietly went away. But it seemed very popular. Um, I I think if they brought it back, in fact, they there was talk of it being brought back uh, in some capacity with Dolly Parton. And that was like a huge deal around here. That was just a few years ago that people were really excited about that. Mm. Do we so we don't know if maybe an early version of Antifa was behind <laughs> taking Opryland down? We don't yeah. know that to, for sure. We don't know for sure, but I mean, I'm reporting it. Obviously, I yeah. just I just don't know it. Yeah, <laughs> people are saying it more and more. Yeah, <laughs> those floods. There were several floods in this area, and we don't. You know, uh, I don't know if this Antifa uh, put some holes in some dams or uh, it- like put the extra water in a river or something well i mean we know how much they love soup is it possible that the soup was being opened up and poured (laughs) into the river Mm. soup very chunky displaces more water than just water alone so something to think about a Mm -hmm. thickening agent yeah if you're looking to create a flood add a lot of soup to a river that's right (laughs) yeah Uh, um i guess jesse you were the like on the ground source of this and you and and it's uh, foggy memories it's before you were 10 but uh uh, what do you remember about it? Was, were there were there things worth uh, saving? Uh, are, do you have positive memories here? Yeah, I I think I do. You know, the um, I also know that I've always been lame uh, my whole life, so <laughs> I never would have gone on the Hangman ride. I might have seen it and been terrified, and that would that would have been the end of it. I it, it would not surprise me at all if the extent of my being in Opryland was uh, my mom taking me there and us uh, getting on the, uh, they're called the Tin Lizzies, I think, the extremely loud go-kart motored. um, I mean, those are the worst things in any park to me. I don't know if you guys agree with that. Have you ever sat on one of these things? I don't know in this, in this, what, like, yeah, what, I don't think so. I have, yeah. It's pretty much like an Autopia engine, but like on a Model T, like frame, <laughs> like a Model T style frame. And a lot of older parks uh, keep these going. Like sometimes it's their vintage. Like this has been here since the twenties, and we've just kind of like kept it up, where we've yes. swapped out some parts. They're the type of thing you would see at a zoo, not necessarily like a like an actual proper park. This is like the thing that you pay. <laughs> 50 cents and get on at the zoo and you and you feel like shit when you get it because your ass is 
What's that thing where your ass gets like really vibrated and it like itches? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I know that. Also. <laughs> okay, you know that one. Okay, I'm yeah. glad we're relating uh, on something. I don't know if there's a name for it. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. It's a. It's got to be maybe a spine. It's maybe it's partly a spine, like a lower part of your spine gets like jacked up a little bit. I don't know. I need. A, I, I need know. a better. I, I need a better ass. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if I went and got on the Tin Lizzies, um, and got on some kind of like tram, and then maybe got on the log ride, which that's to me is what was emblematic of the park is the the flume, which. Jason, you said it was called the Nest T Plunge. Is that real? That was that was, real? That was real for like I think one summer. Uh, it, okay. It was I think originally called the Flume Zoom, and then at some point the Dulcimer Splash Log Ride. That is yeah. not the last utterance of Dulcimer coming to this episode. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. Yes. That. <laughs> um, yes. Oh, Plunge was a uh, that that was like a slogan. That was that was a campaign for. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a uh, campaign for okay. Nesty. So, so to turn that into a, the like famous a... phrase we all love. That's crazy. Uh, it was also look. I hate, I have to say it. Uh, it was also a bump that Mick Foley would regularly t- regularly take. Oh. He would fall onto the concrete, like on his back, from the ring apron in wrestling. So I just had to say that because it's a thing I know. It was called the Nesty Plunge. A Nesty Plunge was a really ugly-looking bump he would take in oh. wrestling, Oof. and and that wasn't an endorsement. Uh, I no, that was not an official Nesty endorsed. <laughs> 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 he wouldn't get like fifty bucks every time he landed on his back on the concrete. Please, he, have. he deserves it. The he McMahon family it. are dignified people. They wouldn't do <laughs> yeah, something well, like that. <laughs> he was doing it before. He was doing it in WCW too. Oh, so okay. The, so Ted Turner. Ted Turner owed him the money there. Who shockingly does not come up in the history <laughs> of uh, this. Very good. Yeah. So we need to. There has not been a lot of Ted Turner on this podcast, but we should correct that. Uh, He, you know, where he came up the the Sid and Marty Croft Park, um, Mm -hmm. the short lived indoors. Yeah, yeah, Sid and Marty Croft Park in Atlanta is now the CNN building. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also a fan of Ted's Montana Grill. uh, His um, like mediocre burger restaurant but that's oddly satisfying <laughs> to me and people would be so mad that several times when i've been to new york city for only a few days i'm like you know where i really want to go ted's montana grill <laughs> no wow, you, you, you've been there multiple times <laughs> yes i was at like last wow. time i was in new york i was only there for like three days and like with that short amount of time you know what i need to do ted's montana grill really oh, this <laughs> is such new a, information to us such a tourist this, hack. yeah this is a Patreon episode, I think. Wow. Sure, sure. Gladly. It's one of my yeah. favorite restaurants. When you're, you're in New York, you gotta go. Folks, for the longest time, I felt like a giant dunce when it came to cooking, doing anything in the kitchen, really. I assume some of you feel that same way, which is why my whole perspective on it was changed when I saw and experienced a product called HelloFresh. Now, folks, if you don't know what HelloFresh is, I'm going to tell you. It is America's number one meal kit. Basically, they send you a box. It's got a bunch of good, fresh ingredients in it. It comes with instructions and tells you how to make really nice meals. Yes, it's easy and it's stress-free. I made a HelloFresh meal. I've made multiple at this point, but I made something called the Creamiest Mushroom Ravioli. That's the name of it. It also describes it. It was very easy. It saved me a ton of time because you go online, all these recipes are different. No, this is one card. It's two-sided. It's very simple. I did it. I felt like a genius. I'm not. I felt like one. And then I had a delicious meal. HelloFresh offers convenient, no-contact delivery to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the family. Go to HelloFresh.com slash ThemePark90 and use promo code ThemePark90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. I'm going to say this once again because it's important. Go to HelloFresh.com slash ThemePark90, like the number 90, and use code ThemePark90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. 
Well, wow. hey, uh, folks, an uh, exciting thing I learned about the the now Opry Mills, uh, Grand Ole Opry, the existing complex, as of 2020, one of the old Opry land buildings that had flooded during the 2010 floods has been repaired. And again, this is, as of 2020, is now a Paula Deen's family kitchen. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Jesse, do people get canceled in Nashville? Has that, Do they know about that concept yet? <laughs> It, wait, is that true? It's it's on the Opryland camp. This is news to me. It's it's on the Opryland. Paula I, Dean is there. That is what I was reading about. Yeah, supposedly. I wow. will pull it up. Yeah, that's Multiple, crazy. There's one at Pigeon Forge, and uh, and maybe a few more, and uh, yeah, one oh at Opry God. Mills. You're right. I I had not uh, I had not seen that. That's interesting to me. That's I mean, it's not surprising. Um, She's, I mean, she's going to make money still, obviously. I actually, I have, yep. I have like three knives in my drawer that I laugh at every time I pull out that say Paula Dean <laughs> on there um, in a very racist script. No, it looks, normal. it's normal. <laughs> it's a normal font. It's a normal font. It's a normal font. Um, but yeah, yeah you, no, but you get that. So, yeah. I, I think I gave my mom like the a Guy Fieri pan one year for Christmas. They like just sell these pans at the stores now. Like yep. any celebrity chef. Yep. Yeah. Mm. How, How are the that? knives? Um, I do use the, I, I'll tell you what I use the knives for most, most often is they are sort of my designated, um, styrofoam pack opening knife where it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, it's the big, it's the chicken breasts that are too, they're too big. They're too big. And there's three of them in the package. And this is the knife I take out and I slice that open and then immediately throw it in the dishwasher because I don't care. I don't need to do anything else with it. I'm not taking any risk. It's just it has one job and it goes right in the dishwasher. And I kind of like it for that. So mm -hmm. I give it an A plus. And I think she should have more restaurants, actually. Okay, I think well, she's a great now, way. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, thanks for being here. Okay, <laughs> new topic. <laughs> Uh, um, let's, uh, uh, let, let's talk about some other stuff in the, in the park, uh, before the last hour and a half of Mills, uh, conversation. The, um, <laughs> I, uh, I'll just throw on names, see if you remember any of these. Well, I mean, I think we, we brought it up before that, you know, there's all these country areas, but of course we're rock and roll guys. We go, our eyes look at that map and go straight to the rock place, which mm -hmm. for a while was called music of today. And um, and in music of today, that's where you could go on the ride, Little Deuce Coop, <laughs> <laughs> circa nineteen eighty four. Uh, yeah, um, that's very cool. That's yeah, very yeah. cool. Uh, um, also, uh, also a ride there apparently called Rock and Roller Coaster before yes. Disney did it. Yes, and and they had a little Rock and Roller Coaster. Oh wow, huh. there was a smaller version. Yeah, so they, I guess, they didn't copyright that name. Uh, mm, I could have saved the entire thing. Yeah, I think it's generic enough. I think that. Like what could you? What, what's copyrightable? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it rocks. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to do more than that. I think <laughs> to get in front of a judge or whatever. That's no. like Paris Hilton trying to copyright. It's hot. Yeah. You're saying? Oh yeah. yeah. Similar thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I guess that's a good point. I guess. <laughs> I guess maybe Disney probably though has copywritten the words rock and roll or coaster. Yes, almost yeah, certainly the they've done it. Well, yeah. They're, yeah, they're yeah, they're smarter. Uh, uh and they're st and unlike Opryland, they're still around. Um Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I there's there's a question. You I think you're you were correct in what you uh what you said before that I don't think that this is their fault, but uh the 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 site has flooded twice. Uh it flooded when it was a theme park and it flooded uh when it was a mall. Um, are we sure this is not their fault? Was this a, a poorly picked location if, if it is going to flood many, many years apart and completely unrelated events? I, yeah, I, I'm not a geologist. Um, and I also don't know what the right word is to say about someone who does know any of that stuff, <laughs> but neither no. I, th I think it's probably geologists. There's rocks underground. So that kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm. what I said. But Aquologist, my, like a, yeah, if you study water, yeah. yeah. I think so. um, my understanding is that those were uh, what's called one hundred year floods. Um, so analyzing the science, it's supposed to happen once every one hundred years or so. So the fact that it happened twice in that uh, whatever twenty five year period is several times more frequent than you would expect. 
Um, now, why is that happening? Maybe you don't uh, lift up that rock and start thinking about uh, why we're having a lot more floods and uh, other <laughs> natural disasters. Um, sure, but sure. I don't, I don't, I don't know that the people behind Opryland are necessarily completely responsible for, uh, for <laughs> for that. Um, but honestly, around here, it, it's it's surprising to me it hasn't been demolished by a tornado. I mean, that's honestly the thing that happens here more. Uh, than anything else, and Nashville has had several big ones in that time period. So, I mean, stuff's going to get fucked up for sure. It's not, it's not LA. Um, we will get fucked up pretty much all the time living out here. And mm. Florida, on the other hand, is just going to take about a hundred years, and then we'll be completely fucked. But in the meantime, I guess it's okay. Um, but yeah, this this type of shit does happen. So I don't I don't know where they would put it that would keep it fr- uh, from from getting fucked up. I think that's just a way of life out here, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's well, they it don't like, have like a Disney weather machine or anything. They don't have the money. No, no, they don't. I um, think so. That like we wait. Do you think Disney will ever get up to that? Will they? Will they be the ones to spearhead like a carbon conversion machine that's specifically oh, over Orlando? That's a good question. So yeah, Disney just purely out of a profit motive mm-hmm. will solve some aspect of global warming. Mm-hmm. Mm. A big blimp that looks like Mickey and that looks like it's like ingesting <laughs> some substance like and he's spitting hot, out another. Hot, he's hot, like uh, uh, he's like hotboxing or something. <laughs> like carbon. <laughs> and then like, like a vaporizer. <laughs> and then it tilts backwards and spits it up out of the uh, our atmosphere into space for us. Give me wow. a hit of that carbon. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, they could certainly afford to fund at least the research. They have all those crazy research relationships with, like, Carnegie Mellon or so. But, like, what peaks we've had behind the scenes, we, I have, we have learned that it's like, yeah, this one the company pays for, it's a little expensive. This you can get on the App Store. And it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> That's how you plan stuff? <laughs> it's available yeah. on iOS, just on the App Store? I see. Uh, I will say, though, I think if you look at most of the corporations during COVID, uh, we're going to have to have a much worse crisis before any of them step up and do a lot. (laughs) So like they'll have to we'll have to be like melting from the sun. Like humans will be like half melted before like a corporation goes, huh, maybe we could use our money to do something. I could see them starting the Mickey atmospheric balloon program and then laying everybody off. Uh, right in the middle of it. I think that would maybe be the compromise they aimed for. Yeah, I think that's poss- very possible. They <laughs> just have one on person <laughs> who operates it like a drone, and that is otherwise they can fire 20,000 yeah. people, yes. <laughs> or it's just Bob Chapek operating it. <laughs> it's just the guy, yeah. Yeah, just one guy. <laughs> Fly, Mickey. Um, I okay. What what else is uh, what else is in this place? Uh, um, the uh, well, we, we didn't say see, what Grizzly River Scoop. Oh, Scott, I was I, just gonna say, Little Deuce Coop is a teacup style ride housed in a geodesic dome. <laughs> that's pretty good. I'm not sure yeah. why that's a uh, named after a car song, but um, uh, why hip, not a hip modern car song? A really, yeah, yeah no, uh, no hipper song. Um, a song that I once performed uh, in a lip sync fashion with a Boy Scout troop. Um, and, really? Yeah, yeah. And there was a part that I, if you can imagine, spearheaded. You know what we should do? <laughs> 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 you know what would be fun, uh, fellow kids of 1995? <laughs> do you have video of that? I, You know, I should look into it because I can't Ooh. deprive the audience of that. I do remember that there's a part about the pink slip daddy, and then we all pulled out a little pink piece of paper. And I'm oh, going beet red idea? as I wow. describe this. I wow. um, well, my dad helps choreograph it. <laughs> oh man, There's some great revelations on this episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, great is one word. <laughs> Mortifying is another. I, I can't not say content. it though. Did um, we? Did we? Can I just confirm that the music of today area they eventually threw in the towel and renamed it Duwa Diddy City? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> Where they just Dua like Diddy Diddy Dum Diddy Do a, a very much more modern name. Yeah. <laughs> Named after a more modern song. I was just looking the year end songs 1984. Uh, number one, When Doves Cry, Prince. <laughs> 
Uh, what's Love Got to Do With It, number two. Say, 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 number three. Footloose, number four. Mm-hmm. Those were the songs of the day, mm-hmm. just for context. So that's that's actually like, that makes me feel better about the theming of this place because that's, I guess with the exception of the Prince song, those are extremely corny tunes. I think, <laughs> because I thought, I thought like, I don't know when you think of songs of 1984. Is that is that what you go to? Do you immediately think? Did that make sense to you when you read that, or, or were you thinking of something else? Well, I was thinking of like new wave stuff. But if I think about 1984, I'm probably thinking of stuff that wasn't as big of a. I'm thinking of like what Elvis Costello was doing, but he never really had a like he was never like number one on yeah. the charts or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was thinking of like metal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Jump but, Jump was on the charts by yeah, Van Halen. You, cool. You forget that pop music I'm I'm going to sound like a real piece of shit. You forget that pop music has always sucked and when you <laughs> think back of stuff that was like like oh that that's what this era was. It wasn't. That that's what either the cool shit was or the the or maybe like the really uncool shit that has since become cool, but the the very tip toppy of the crop there was always kind of uh, bad. So it makes sense that this was also bad and like poorly themed to me anyway. It was just a little older. Yeah. They I mean, I think a little bit behind. I think the Grammys, if you watch a Grammys broadcast until about 1989, it was still extremely like uh, you know, up with people. Is that the name of the group? Is it like very uh-huh. like corny Starland vocal band? It, like shows at Opryland, honestly. It like yeah. took a long time before things weren't lame as hell and it's almost like logic defying now that the grammys would start with a big kendrick lamar performance or something because like but it was like it, it like everything was 40 white people harmonizing <laughs> like mm-hmm. i think almost into the 90s and perhaps through still a lot of it but even yeah. the like the way we look at i mean i remember in high school uh, like freshman or sophomore year in high school, uh, I this just sticks out in my mind so clearly. Comedy Central would show this commercial for like hits of the '80s, like new wave hits of the '80s, with clips from the music videos. And we, me and my f- dork friends, just thought it was like the funniest thing we had ever seen. Like, can you believe this shit? Like, you know. And then a few years later, Grand Theft Auto Vice City comes out. And then everyone's like, "Man, these songs are awesome! What happened to these?" <laughs> like we get, with the like framing device, the branding like totally uh, worked on us. Where it's like, "Man, the radio stations in this game rock." Yeah, mm-hmm. Need cooler. Art, um, I guess. I'm looking. I mean, if you look, I would say you would say a lot of that. I'm looking at the whole chart now. I think you would think a lot of the songs are cheesy. There's nothing like. Break My Stride by Matthew Wilder, 27. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the a, coolest song. That is world. a corny, corny song. <laughs> also, what I keep ringing in my head is the the uh, solo on What's Love Got to Do With It, which is so... Uh-huh. <laughs> like, what is that played? Is that a child's keyboard? Is that played on a, on a baby's toy? <laughs> I don't know what any of this shit... I don't know what any of the sounds were. My, my wife loves movies of this i guess it's probably this era now if i mention a movie that's not in this era i'm gonna get my ass torn to shreds but she loves the stuff from when we grew up that to me is very very corny and and unwatchable um uh, i'll i'll stream at night here on the computer i'll go upstairs and she'll have for instance a poly shore movie on i have no interest in watching that not even for ironic sensibility like i don't I just want to be out of the room when that stuff is on. <laughs> um, and last night I walked up and she was watching uh, she was watching Sister Act with the kids. And the kids couldn't follow it at all. Um, <laughs> but she was really enjoying herself. And I was like, God damn, this movie is so corny. At the end of the movie, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. At the end of the movie, Whoopi Goldberg is leading her her choir of nuns in, oh my God, and I'm not going to be able to remember the song. But it's um, like, it's I a will song. follow him, or is that used earlier? I th- maybe that is it. Hmm. Yeah, I think yes, I think that's it. Because the the joke of the movie was often taking songs about men and making them about God, right? That was one of the running gags of yes, the yeah, movie. Indeed. So they were doing that, and then at the end, the Pope stands up and gives them a, a standing ovation, <laughs> and Whoopi's like, "Hey, check this guy out." <laughs> 
Like, what the fuck? <laughs> this was in a movie theater? I can't believe this shit, you know? That's crazy to me. And that's what all this is. It's just, I, I can't believe people were doing it. Like, kids, you know, there were eight-year-old kids going... Little Deuce Coop. <laughs> and then, like, yes, Scott. S- me, yes, I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> Proudly. <laughs> something truly for all ages. Like, the, the term all ages meant something in this time period. The little kids and old people and everyone in between had the fucking exact same interests. What a nightmare. Well, he, this, this, I think, is a good uh, point to transition into a, a, a video that I have, uh, which might move us into... Uh, a next general area to discuss uh i have here i will screen share uh this is a clip uh from a special from 1988 called opryland 200 years of american (laughs) music um right now you're looking at uh, frankie avalon um i was gonna jump i was gonna show a really specific thing here but since with what we've been talking about i feel like i should jump around uh you'll just see random frames here like a lot of people all doing the same dance on a big staircase which i think oh, is in the wow. opryland hotel yes. uh i mean you're this is this is all ages entertainment big time uh, uh just you know uh, giant hair and giant earrings on barbara mandrell in a gi- in a giant uh, giant shouldered gold drape um i mean it's just hours and hours wow. of the corniest uh, uh you know hee haw sh- stuff ever kind of hopping all around the campus cuz i feel like there were like 20 different places to do shows at opryland as well as the boat we haven't talked about the boat oh, yet wow. which is still around the boat's yes. called the general jackson and it's parked in the opry mills <laughs> a parking lot uh you ever done it you ever been on the boat I've never been on the boat, never been tempted to go on the boat. Um, <laughs> I've, it is, it, I, I think one time I accidentally got stuck in the little rounded driveway that the boat like maintains that I was, I was like trying to get away. I was trying to go in the right lane. I accidentally got in there. And I was like, oh, shit, it looks like I'm going to get on the fucking boat. I don't want to do this. And, you know, like, like, <laughs> kind of like peel out of there. But <laughs> I've never been tempted by the General Jackson. Your car got life. trapped on the boat. You had to do. <laughs> So it's the three-hour loop filled with oh, ragtime. Oh, no, now I have to have all-ages fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you blast metal from the car and just, like, keep laying on the horn until they stop. <laughs> Has there been any uh, talk of renaming this boat? <laughs> um, I'm going to so guess I'll no. <laughs> I'm going to guess no. And in here, let me see if I get lucky. If, if we do, I'm going to play a second of the song, and if it's part of the song that I'm thinking of, then it'll make its point for me. If not, I will, okay. I will stop it. Here's a little sample from uh, this Opryland musical special. Nope, it did it. It said it. This is a lot yeah, of people yeah, yeah. in shiny. Dr- There's those those huge skirts, like I was talking about, big yes. circle skirts flying up, and they are waiting on the Robert E. Lee mm-hmm. guys. I actually did see there. There was talk. Uh, last year of renaming it to the HMS uh, Paula Dean. So that's something <laughs> we can go. That's it, cool. Can I confirm it's Stonewall Jackson, not Andrew Jackson? <laughs> I would have to. I would I'm, guess, I'm, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm six guessing. of one, I have another of the other. You know, it's not much better, but. <laughs> if we could get uh, Trump to tweet about this before he's not president anymore, that would be. Oh, he'll make that a <laughs> priority. Yeah. It'll be his main thing, I think. Yeah. Um, so that's a little taste of the special. Boy, this goes on. You get off the boat and marching bands are led, and then we go into the Opry. I think that was a. Is that a Lyle Lovett? We're, no, yeah. not Lyle Lovett. That's wow, a Chris yeah. That's pretty, uh, uh, Yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, anyways, um, but what I was going to show was, of course, the rock and roll section. They jump all around the park. Uh, there's a, there's a Beach Boys performance. Most of these performances are by a very old man. Let me just get a taste of this. <laughs> well, East Coast girls are hit by what? East Is he singing like this to mock the Beach Boys? <laughs> this, this, uh, he's also engaging in like Tim Conway-esque antics. He's on a rapid ride, the guy singing in this bad falsetto, and it's sped up, and he's with some, you know, some gorgeous scrunchy wearing babes, and uh, they're getting splashed on the rapid ride. 
Your um, seersucker suit is gonna get soaked, my man. You're crazy. <laughs> also, are you okay? Like your voice. <laughs> I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> then we the, like what is that voice? Um, every time that I am uh, listening to some Beach Boys adjacent thing, uh, Aaron, my wife, who does not like the Beach Boys, makes always makes a point of saying, "This is what I hear when I when you play the Beach Boys. There's no difference to me." <laughs> yeah, and I say, "Hey." Um, let me play you. You haven't really listened to little deuce coop here. Put on some headphones. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, then we get, you mentioned sister. Act. This is a, a performance of the Supremes on the big log ride. I do wrong to make you stay away so long. Ah! That's fun. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to show, uh, and I'll try to not spoil it here, um, this, despite it not being American music, of course the, the Beatles are part of the fabric of American music now, um, and that, this, that, this is how they pay tribute to it, and I'm gonna have to jump in and narrate real fast, because the characters who show up, um, are so delightful. I'll let you guys be surprised, but, uh, here we go. In 1964, England made a huge contribution to America's music. They sent us the Beatles. We're Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club. We hope you will enjoy the show. So, um, let me stop real fast. Uh, this is oh the same, God. this is the old man in the seersucker suit who badly sang the Beach Boys, but now he's in a bad mop top wig. And he's performing <laughs> Sgt. Pepper with a cadre of characters. And the characters are all your favorite serial characters. <laughs> the Lucky Charms Leprechaun, Buzz the Honey Nut Cheerios Bee, and the Trix Rabbit. Um, not present for whatever reason is uh, Boo Berry or whatever the character's name is from that serial. Um uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Count Chocula. Count, Count Chocula, Chocula is off on this side. I didn't mean to leave him out. Um, this is the strangest little piece of tape I could imagine. He slides into a ball pit. <laughs> he um, is mugging <laughs> so hard throughout this whole thing. Yeah, we get it. You're in a ball pit. Oh, my God. Who, who is this guy? I don't know. I couldn't. I didn't watch the, his introduction carefully enough to know. Is he um, the mayor? <laughs> <laughs> It's a little treat for his uh, 20th year in office. Um, anyway, um, I, th this takes us into... I had another way into this, because there's several generations of great characters at Opryland, but this is the strangest thing to me, that you'd think, so Opryland, the home of country music, huh? Uh, and yeah, that's right, and it's where you can take a picture with the Trix Rabbit and Count Chocula. That's this is inter this is interesting because this is these character this is IP that has not been exploited thoroughly at a theme park mm -hmm. you know and at least with the, what we've come across thus far and this is the first time I'm seeing a theme park exploit them yeah, yeah. And, I, and they're great characters to, I'm so excited they were at a theme well rounded park. characters that we all love some of our favorite characters in fiction I would I would say. <laughs> Jesse agree. <laughs> Jesse agrees. What's I know your he fondness does. For I, I'm just thinking of the. I'm just thinking of their backstories. Is there a canonical reason they're all there together, or is this? I mean, I'm, I meant to understand this is uh, a, a larger universe. What's happening with these guys? Uh, there's a lot of questions I have because I'm just seeing this footage for the first time. <laughs> I think they all are big music lovers for sure. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they all love music. They love the sounds of today. Um, I mean, I'm sure there'll be some movie uh, that connects all of them together into a larger mm -hmm. universe, just as Scoob recently um, tied in. Who else is in Scoob? Now I can't remember. Scoob uh, is a universe builder of a movie. The Birdman character? I forget. The Birdman? I haven't seen Scoob. Scoob. Alcatraz? I um, <laughs> Scoob introduces the Birdman of Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't know why they're together. Did they all? Is this like um, in Toontown that the Disney and the Warner Brothers characters all hang out? Like, do all of the? Uh, is there a mascot town where mascots all come from and only mascots are allowed? And regardless of what brand you work for, you all hang out at a cafe or something. 
Yeah, like, yeah, like a bar, but, you know, safe for the whole, I mean, they're, they're just dancing around, and so, I mean, obviously, they work hard, they play hard, too. That's what mm-hmm. I love about Count Chocula, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, Count Chocula's always grinding, is what I like. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He wakes up in the morning, he's grinding, and that's what he loves. <laughs> On that grind. Uh, um, here's a, uh, uh, at least share the screen again to show you how they were introduced to the general public as being there. Uh, this is from the Tennessean newspaper. Opryland introduces Big G Breakfast Buddies. Um, oh. Big G, and it's the General Mills G, which, you know, uh, uh, for some mm-hmm. reason on this show, we talk, we like to say the phrase King Features Syndicates, oh, which is this boring yeah. corporate name that a lot of the comic strips are, are owned under. And this is similar to me. Like, wow, mommy, it's the General Mills Big G Breakfast Buddies. Like, nobody. <laughs> It's a really mealy-mouthed corporate phrase. The Big G Breakfast Buddies. I've never heard of that phrase. I wonder if that's still something they refer to them as internally. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it does... Now that we're seeing this, it does feel like... there's Why hasn't there been 10 movies about the Big G Breakfast Buddies? Just looking at this picture, Count Chocula is straight up wearing high heels. He is in some Louboutins. Oh, he yeah. is <laughs> flexing point. right now on our asses, and he looks great. Um, yeah. What? If, so, well, uh, no, uh, uh, sorry, for, Booberry as well is wearing, I feel like, a flat. A woman's well, flat. He's got Booberry, some high yeah, heels. Yeah, a a more shoes, conservative certainly. flat. Uh, knows he's going to be on his feet all day, so... Possibly yeah, think, the Buzz the Bee as well, maybe. I mean, those are more like slippers or something. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. He's comfortable. Um, and the uh, the Trix Rabbit that's that's the Trix Rabbit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's on natural. Yeah, I I think Booberry is in the Marge Simpson ones. Um, they look pretty good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what? So you don't like Big G Breakfast Buddies? You feel like that's too stiff, too corporate? Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. What's your pitch on what to call? All of the serial mascots when they get together is there is do you have a better idea Ooh. of what to call them when they team up? God, I don't. I, I just want that corporate. I just want that brand out of there, General Mills. But mm. um, I mean, I don't. I guess I don't mind Breakfast Buddies. I guess Breakfast Buddies is okay. Yeah, bre- yeah. Um, do we, do we have a better one though? I don't know if I do off the off the top. I would. Of I honestly, I think it's too. I want to. I want more of a King Feature Syndicate. <laughs> I want it. I want it a little less specific. So I want it. I want it to be like uh, Triangle Entertainment presents <laughs> characters, <laughs> like the General General Mills uh, uh, Breakfast Consumption Ambassadors. Mm, that's still that's still that suggests something Th- to me. That almost I want is, it to be yeah. so neutral. You can almost understand what you mean by that. Yeah, maybe try to obfuscate <laughs> it even more. Uh, um, what? GM consumption concern. <laughs> that's better. That's closer. Okay. <laughs> that's good. I was thinking Sugar Mills Gang. Is that too clever by half? Too cu- I think too cute. Sugar too cute. like that. Uh, that suggests to me they're having fun, and I can see how that might be interesting. <laughs> I think it's yeah, general, general, uh, maybe like general concerns properties. The general, general, uh, general Mills, uh, yeah, concerns. Maybe it's general LLC. Mills concern. LLC. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And, and they each one is a concern. They're not. We don't yeah, consider them a mascot. They're a concern. Yeah. They're yeah. concerns. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a well, consortium. Oh yeah, yeah. That's good, but concerns is a little more uh, vague. You don't know yeah, what that extremely is. Extremely, that's corporate. fair. Well, there's some yeah. adorable concerns, and yeah, they are uh, rocking some wonderful footwear. Ooh. Our <laughs> our favorite concern in fiction. <laughs> well, is will be what we'll say from now on. Scott, did you come across the original characters? Oh, you know it. I'm sad oh, okay. they had to go. I mean, you need characters. Uh, as uh, high and mighty as uh, Count Chocula to to top these, uh, uh, you know, because the, these are no slouches themselves. Sure, I if everyone can see right here, uh, all your favorite cartoon pals. Uh. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, Delilah Dulcimer, uh, <laughs> Frankie Fiddle. Uh, and these are we should say these are anthropomorphic musical instruments. Yes. Uh, yes, faces jammed in like <laughs> often like between the strings, like it's eyeballs yeah. and mouths poking out from behind strings and with frets on their sides where ears would be. 
kind of like nightmarish characters that would like come to life in a yeah horror movie if there was a horror movie about yeah instruments that uh, were murderers it's some yellow submarine shit for sure (laughs) (laughs) yes barney bags uh yancey banjo and then they wanted to go home early so then they just went with johnny guitar (laughs) (laughs) did you call him johnny barney bags huh did you call him barney bags isn't it say Barney Bag or Barney, Barney Bass? Bass. Barney, Barney Bass. I was wondering. That's tough okay. to read. It's but. pretty, yeah, it's pretty blurry, all the pictures. Um, yeah, I was well, wondering. Th- that's true. I agree that the, the text could be clearer, although the name is right next to an upright bass. That's, uh, that's well, <laughs> I couldn't. Not a, not a bag. <laughs> not a garbage bag full of musical instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Discarded, broken instruments. <laughs> the spirit Barney of bags. broken instruments. Barney Bags. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Barney Bags is that bad. I think I don't know. I don't know what nicknames they give their, you know, their their instruments, their tools down at the Opry. So yeah, you know, yeah. I play a bass guitar, also known as a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your bag, man? Maybe they were talking about a bass guitar that whole time. Okay, Austin Powers was talking about a bass guitar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> his, his bag, baby. I want to say there's one who's not represented in your picture. Uh, uh, if I could consult my list, yeah, I think please. there's one more. I just want to make sure they all get their due. Um, Finding my list. Oh, uh, uh, Jose Mandolin. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he's not in the picture. I don't know why they yeah they, don't they like cut that. out diversity. But um, yeah, he's yeah, he's not allowed to be photographed. But <laughs> if you hear a mandolin, it's Jose. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I do. We like these characters. Yeah, I That's like good em. to you. <laughs> I like. <laughs> okay, I like. I like. Uh, I like Johnny Guitar a lot. I will say that. Yeah, Johnny Guitar has a certain charm. Uh, yeah, he's sort of. I were don't know. these Jason? Do we know were these walk around? They weren't right. There's no. They were just pictures. I mean, yeah, I think. I think that would be kind of horrific in 3D. Yeah. No, no, no. There were walk arounds. Oh, they were. I don't have a picture, but I. Yeah. They. Well, I'll see if I can find it. But they. Yeah. No, you could get your picture with Johnny Guitar. All right. Well, that's gonna that's gonna really uh, determine my feelings on them is how they held up in 3D. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wait here. I got it. Um. Sharing the screen. Let's see. What do we think of the gang? Opryland's musical characters. I'm a thumbs up now. They what, look what better changes than here? I thought. They yeah. just look they they just exceed your expectations. Yeah, I think they look much better in this picture than they do in the cartoons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they look a little more. I'm not going to say realistic, right? Because <laughs> that's not the right way of putting this. No. But they're they're not quite as like fantastical. I, I, the 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 drawing of them does make it seem like there's no way they could possibly make this real. And by God, they did it. Yeah, and this is early. This is early mascot tech, the earlier mascot technology as well. So, mm-hmm. um, it's very. We should say for the listener, it's extremely Sid and Marty Croft. It's very, uh, yeah. it's very Lidsville, I mm-hmm. would say. But I'm usually horrified by those things, and I, I really don't mind the the gang here. It's pretty cool when you have these things and you don't immediately go, "Oh, their face is in the mouth." Like that's a pretty good bar to clear. Is knowing that I'm not sure I'm not sure where these people's heads are, right? I don't know that they're not. Yeah, not at not, all. Not obvious to me where these people exist inside the body of the instruments. There yeah. could be like three people in each suit for all I know. <laughs> yep, <laughs> or no, or they're autonomously operated. <laughs> they were, yeah, robots. They were alien technology robots that Opry Land had <laughs> access to. Uh, Jesse, can I ask in general? Do you have any? Is there like a? Do you have a guilty pleasure? ip mascot that you like even where you go like well i do have affection for this character from childhood that's interesting an ip mascot okay so we're thinking specifically one that has been been brought into the real world here yeah probably i mean it could be it's pretty open-ended i mean it could be like from a yeah a food like a spokes character from a food or from a commercial or even a yeah, walk around character something like that you know, I don't. I don't think many of the product-related ones speak to me. Although, of course, I mean, like anyone else, if I saw Count Chocula in person, I'd shit a brick. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm only human. Yeah. Um, but I can distinctly remember something from my childhood, which 
I think is like maybe in my box of things I go to immediately when I, I, I start to get a big head sometimes about myself. And I, I got to remember, oh, no, actually, you're really stupid. And one of the things I go to to remind myself of how stupid I am is that I remember one Christmas, I feel like this was, and I don't know if this is right or not, but I remember thinking one Christmas I woke up and there was a framed photo of me meeting Donatello, the smart turtle from the Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. And at that time, for some reason, I did not remember going to Dis- it would have been Disney or Universal. I guess Universal, right? No, Disney. Well, they were they were in the parks for a little while in the night. They were, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I I didn't remember meeting him and having my photo taken. So I thought because I was so dumb <laughs> that Santa had somehow whisked me away to have my photo taken while awake with the turtle, then framed it and gave it to me as a Christmas gift. So. <laughs> I would say to answer your question, I really liked the turtles so mm-hmm. much so that it almost drove me insane. <laughs> wow, really? I I I I had like a like a break in reality trying to figure out how the picture of myself showed up for Christmas. Uh, wow. So I really liked the turtles. That's interesting. You saw talk about the turtles breaking someone's brain. As you look behind me, there are just all Ninja Turtle toys pointing guns at my back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they've they've broken a lot of brains. Yeah, well, one of them seems to be sort of a sexual predator as well, but the rest of them <laughs> seem just like straight up violent th- threats. But oh, trench coat all, Raphael. Trench coat Raphael. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're all, by the way, they're all violent. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> they can all. They all have the power to kill. They do. They do. Yeah. They've established that in the films. Yeah. Could yeah. I pick apart that uh, notion more? And I know you don't defend it, but just to to uh, get into it even more thoroughly, that. Uh, it was the night, I guess, Christmas Eve, that Santa absconded with you and then took a, a daytime photo that was not you weren't cognizant of? Yeah, in retrospect, there's a lot of pieces of it that don't really fit together. I mm-hmm. just, to me, it was Occam's razor, right? I don't yeah. remember having this photo taken. It's Christmas. How else could this possibly have occurred? You know, and I think to that extent, you say, well, Santa did it, and that's you just put it in the Santa box and go on about your life and not examine... You know, maybe what's wrong with your brain at such an early age? You know? Well, and also, if you are not necessarily a magic believer, uh, 365 days of the year, maybe you're like, as you get to be an older kid, you're like, I know there's no magic, except for the one day where there is magic. Right, right. <laughs> Although, you know, Santa has to do stuff during the other days, too. I mean, it's not inconceivable that he stopped by, you know, one August afternoon and said, you know, so sprinkled some elf dust over my face and said, you know... And I guess you'd also have to imagine that to Santa Claus, it seemed like it would be a better gift not to meet Donatello, but to simply have a photo of meeting him. Um, so I'm not sure that that really tracks as far as like what a child would like to have. Uh, mm-hmm. So I don't know. Not not a lot of it uh, works. There wasn't like a big conversation. You didn't kind of get into it. He didn't teach you anything. I, or if he did, you know, it's yet to be uncovered. Um, maybe one of those things he sort of planted... And I'll rediscover in my 50s, uh, just maybe right when I need it. I mean, knowing Donatello, I mean, he's the smartest one after all. I've, of course. I got to assume he's got my best interest in mind. <laughs> You'd have to hope, at least. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Of course. He wasn't wearing a trench coat, so I assume everything no. was on the up and up. <laughs> he's <is> trustworthy, <laughs> unlike some <laughs> turtles. Uh, um, hey, here's a, another piece of IP who's in a different uh, coat. Just a really quick flash here of... Uh, a character they had in the early 90s called Professor U.B. Smart. I'm not really sure what his deal was in general, but he's got, uh, you know, like thick round glasses. He's uh, he's driving some kind of cart around. And to me, he looks exactly like David Cross. He is so David Cross-esque. Yeah, I was going to say he's got a very McFeely, Mr. McFeely vibe as oh, well. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. From Mr. Rogers. Certainly. Um, I don't know. We'll post this photo. If you're the kid in the photo, or if you know what Professor UB Smart did, um, let us know. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, that's the IP. Look, the IP, that's really where I fell in love with this place. You can, I think, judge a park, uh, especially based on their IP. And, I mean, two fantastic generations. I just have to applaud them for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really like that all the rides seem like something Cotton Hill would yell in anger. 
the uh, Wabash Cannonball. <laughs> Grizzly River Rampage, Bobby. Uh, close, close to Gri- Grizzly River Run. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. a yeah. different yeah. Rapids there. ride. Another Disney ride. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, but the Grizzly River Rampage has a unique uh, uh, fact that it was, for one year, used as a course in the Nash- Nations Bank Whitewater Championships which in 1995 alone served as a qualifier for the 96 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. <laughs> what? Wow. Wait, so they did, they ran, uh, they went to raft it down this rapids course, uh, this rapids layout, and what? you could qualify for the Olympics potentially. And they relocated that thing to Kentucky Kingdom. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of rides, these rides, we relocate it to other parks eventually, uh, or sold it's to so Six so weird, Flags. that doesn't count, though, a Rapids ride that's, like, doesn't, <laughs> it, doesn't it have to be regulation somehow? Well, you just fill, you turn on the Rapids, and you put in your own raft, and you do it. I guess so. <laughs> in oh, the Olympics, boy. you're not going to face a big fake bear. No, but- Scott is in his whitewater rafting bag <laughs> once again. Here we go. It's time for the big rant. Let's hear it, Scott. We need standards in our whitewater rafting <laughs> Olympics events. <laughs> Can't just pick these courses willy nilly. <laughs> a there- thousand times. There should be look. There should be a bear involved in every different trial at the Olympics, <laughs> and just yeah. at the Olympics, I'd say too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a threat of bear in every event. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, wait, Jason, do you have more rides you were going to list? Uh, no, I think we talked about most of the other ones. And I mean, these were all made by like Arrow or Intamin. Or, like these were big, made by big ride manufacturers. So like, it's not like they just like homemade these out of nothing. Some of so, them look right. good, but do, but just yeah. do you think that they weren't good? Like I think in in weird. DMing, I think you referred to some of the rides as, as quote, hick shit. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, for me, the entertainment is pure hick, um, because it's, it's fiddles and all this other shit. I mean, walking by and seeing someone playing a fiddle and then sitting down and then continuing to watch them play the fiddle is like unimaginable to me. I don't, I don't know what state of mind you could possibly be in that you would want to do that. Although I know many people do, um, I think the rides were perfectly adequate for for that era. Um, again, the appeal to me is essentially nil of getting in a big log and going down a thing and then my feet get all wet. That's not... I don't want that to happen because I'm not at a water park. I don't want to be wet. So I don't really understand. Water parks over here, you stay wet. Normal park over here, you stay dry. That makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a lot of getting wet at, this, uh, at Opryland for sure. Mm. Um, roller coasters. I, I mean, the rock and roller coaster. I think was like, I think that was like a legit roller coaster for a while. Um, yeah. and maybe now it's been employed as sort of a throwback. Like, wasn't this cute? What we used to think was fun or whatever. But I think at the time, I think it probably held its own. It's and, and it's still around. It's uh, let me look. I have it here. It's opera. It's the Cannon Blaster at Great Escape in Queensbury, New York. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, so people get on that now, and it's like they're not dead, and they're not. You know, like Pale. bored, I guess, you mm-hmm. know, so that's that's legitimate. You don't granted you don't go up and like you you don't like what, what's, it, what's the one I remember the a ride I went on as an adult was the one where you go extremely fast and then you sit here for a minute and then some people like hold a penny and they're like, wow, look at the penny floating and then they go back down. Is that the Hulk or Superman or something like that? There's a the yeah. Superman in Magic Mountain is like that. Okay. Because you're saying it's just sort of a ramp up and then you go back. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Might have been it's yeah. not that. That that to me is the modern ride. Although now I guess the modern ride is like there's a screen. I really don't. I don't know what the tech of modern rides is. I guess I'm showing my ass. I don't know what's supposed to be good now. <laughs> well, I think that I look. The classics are still good, but you know, there's different like there's a there's a roller coaster themed around the Ninja Turtles in a mall in New Jersey. Wow. That like tips you up and then like. Like makes you go. How do how do you describe it? It goes like two hundred seventy degrees. It's two hundred. It's it's not a straight down drop. It drops you like less curves a little. Like, yeah, curves inside to make you feel like you're really gonna die. Oh my god! And so uh, that's like more modern. That big mall built in a county with blue laws, so they build a massive, largely empty mall that cannot open mm. on Sundays. Ah. Uh. 
the the moy the mall can't be open on Sundays. I I think shops in East Rutherford, New Jersey, uh, is where it is. They, this is the American Dream Mall, and it yeah. opened. Th- th- this took decades to build. We did a whole episode about it. It took decades to build, then opened like two weeks before COVID hit. <laughs> and, ah. and now is like pseudo open pseudo sometimes open? maybe but uh yeah they can't be open one of the days of the week <laughs> that um, ain't good i uh, and also i was just gonna disney's innovation for rock and roller coaster was adding the greatest american rock and roll band aerosmith oh the it's the aerosmith ride now that's what well that is, yeah, yeah. it is just yeah, the yeah, same rock and roller coaster is aerosmith as aerosmith wow. music it's been that way it's yeah since it opened yeah yeah, uh, agreement, disagreement on that phrase. Uh, greatest rock, greatest American <laughs> rock, greatest and roll American rock and roll band. Yes. Well, it's the music of today. That can't be denied. <laughs> well, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, that's true. Life's too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked at some retailers and they're so expensive and confusing. That's why you need to check out Brooklyn. And- They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. They have a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. I slept on Brooklyn and sheets last night. They're great, slept like a baby. They get softer after each wash. But Brooklinen is so much more than sheets. They've got comforters, pillows, towels, even loungewear. And they've got over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. Don't wait, do something nice for yourself. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code RIDE to get 10% off your first order and free shipping. That's B-R-O-K-O-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code RIDE for 10% off your first order plus free shipping. brooklinen.com and use promo code RIDE at checkout. Um, should we talk, since you bring up uh, a mall, it's hard to go backwards when you bring up a mall. Do we, can we talk about what is there today? Um, yeah. Which is Opry Mills. I, I guess the solution, to, I mean, it seems like just a, a purely uh, a cold calculated business decision that maybe the park is limited at a certain point and uh, yeah, we do have to employ all of these people. This may be due to like tons of ride operators and tons of performers and stuff. What if we cut all that out and we just uh, open up a big mall? And they did, and it is a Mills Mall. I have complained about Mills Malls before because they have uh, no aesthetic. Um, they, I was trying to think how to describe the Mills Malls. I think it's like there's like the tunnels underneath Disney World that connect everything that the public never sees. And it's like, what if that was the mall? What if the mm. what if the what if the what if a bunker was a place where people go? <laughs> yeah, to me, Opry Mills, the the original aesthetic was, I think, significantly worse um, pre-flood because it leaned, I mean, it was also just older and that's just the way things go. I mean, it's updated. It looks a little bit better for my modern eyes, I guess, but it, it did seem at the time to be a little more um, emphatic on the idea, not just being an outlet mall, but having these weird, kitschy places inside of it in fact i was looking at some of the early uh ads for opry mills and they emphasized things that of course haven't been in there in forever but were like one-offs and and i'm struggling to think of one now but i mean if you've been to any of these big outlet malls you know it's not just like here's the old navy that we have at the outlet mall here's the i mean not even gucci but like what's two tiers below gucci like here's the swarovski we have (laughs) here at the mall and it's a little (laughs) bit different or, or whatever but they were also trying to be like, here's 3,000 square feet of, of fucking, I don't know, pretzels or whatever the fuck, whatever weird shit you would put in a mall like that, that seemed to be the focus. And whereas now it's more like a legit, it's more like a normal mall, just eight times as big as it ever should be. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so mammoth every mills, like, like it is such a workout to do the entire loop. It is, yeah. It's legitimately very uh, difficult to see everything in there. Not that you would want to, because it's like some of it literally repeats from side to side. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the aesthetic, I think, the aesthetic of it now is like hotel room or, or or hotel lobby or whatever. Where a lot of times you go into a hotel and you go, I can tell this was expensive. It just doesn't. It doesn't. It's not cohesive in any way. It's just like that's an expensive light fixture. 
that carpet was more expensive than it should have been. Maybe <laughs> that's like a piece of marble that looks really shiny. But you, then you put it all in the same room and you just go, I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> well, I don't know what Ears. this, who's this for? You know? Yeah. And that mall <laughs> yeah. is now built next to a massive hotel with a giant atrium covering much of it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Opryland is a land of contrast. Jason. <laughs> it's, it's yeah the I've I've stayed in Opryland Hotel a couple of times. Um, that looks and, good to me. I, like I, I watched hotel, a long boring yeah. video about all the amenities of the hotel, and it looks great. I think it has my my official review is that it has seen better days. Um, I I don't know if it is coincidental that it that it happens to seem that way once it's been taken over by Marriott um, and has mm. had this massive you know corporate overhaul or maybe i just got a old room when i stayed i don't know but also got uh, flooded don't forget that hard to bounce back from that sure sure um the atrium is legitimately very very cool um if you've never uh, seen it before this is a it's i guess it's probably fair to say it is a convention center first and foremost um which explains the huge footprint of the place um and then it is a hotel that is attached to this convention center as well um, and the hotel does have in the middle um, where you and, and you can access this from the slightly more expensive rooms, the balcony rooms overlook this atrium. And it's just like, I mean, it's like an indoor rainforest, basically. There's like a man-made little stream through there. Um, there's waterfalls in there and just a massive number of plants that have no business really being in Nashville, it seems like. And so along with that, you get... I mean, you get the humidity of obviously what that's like having all those plants in there. But honestly, it's pretty cool. It's pretty novel and it's, yeah. it's kind of interesting. But it is it's also like it's a microcosm of what I what I find like what, what I think about theme parks or, or Disney World in particular, which is, wow, look at this like beautifully curated uh, flora that we're enjoying right now. Uh, what, what better to compliment this than a $21 slice of the worst pizza I've ever had in my life <laughs> right. it brought to my room, you know, by somebody who looks like they hate my guts. So that is that to me is like the experience of Opryland, which is, I think, I mean, that's a huge fucking bummer. Um, well, don't count out uh, all the cool things that could potentially that, that at least at one point were available in that atrium, which is that there was a like night show like a world of color like a disney fountain show where they they lit fountains up uh, uh and they danced to music which looked really cool and then also in that hotel atrium you could see a performance by lloyd lindroth <laughs> who the one and only <laughs> my favorite <laughs> mr show forget. character lloyd <laughs> uh the king of the harp i think this guy he's like he's oh harp liberace God. is what he is wow look at lloyd linra he's in a like a wow. pink uh like sparkly cut like a nudie suit would you say mm -hmm. would that be an accurate uh, mm -hmm. term a nudie suit adjacent i think a little bit yeah. nudie suit-esque people are thrilled right now to be meeting the lloyd lindroth this woman's losing like her mind <laughs> he's dressed like flabber from big bad beetleborgs <laughs> 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 it's as exciting as meeting Flabber. Um, so you know that's cool. Uh, don't don't. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> You're right. Count out it, Lloyd Lindroth. It um, brings a lot to the table. <laughs> Opryland Hotel does, man, and that's. I mean, that is huge as well. Like that's. I mean, the the mall is very very big, but walking around the hotel itself is also like a real chore. Walking around that fucking place, it's not. I mean, it's not interesting at all. <laughs> Uh, a long walk with nothing interesting to do. It was at one point one of the thirty largest hotels in the world. So yeah, yeah wow. pretty uh, pretty massive. Well, and I think also if you compare it to other hotels of its size, it's it's really big for not having a casino attached to it. Yeah, um, which is those are the places that I'm used to getting into those hallways. It's like, oh, this wasn't meant to be anything. Um, like if you ever if you ever walk around. Um, uh, like Caesars or uh, the Bellagio, like some of the really massive hotels in Vegas. You're like, I'm, I want to go somewhere. It's three miles from where I am right now, so I'll get to walking. And in the meantime, you'll see like these these entire corners of the building that are, are very minimally themed, um, where it's just like, it's just carpet and just lights and that's it. It's like, 
this is for the roof line or something. It just exists here and there's nothing to do except for like sit down and plug your phone in. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to exist purely to be vacuumed. You know what I mean? And that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what a lot of corners of the Opryland Hotel are like. Mm -hmm. There's no one in here. There's no one eating here. There's no, nothing going on. You're just walking through. And I, I hope... I hope there's a camera here in case I get attacked. Like, I, there's no other reason for this to exist. <laughs> Does it still connect to, like, the downtown, like, the entertainment district by water taxi? Because that was something that, like, they did at some point, right? Like, they were trying to redo the entertainment district simultaneously as they're redoing, like, the Opera Land property. I, th those words don't make any sense to me the way that you put them <laughs> okay. together. I, I, have, I, don't, I don't know, know anything. Even, no, I believe you. I believe that at one time that's something someone said. I just don't even know. I wouldn't know, first of all, because I don't go downtown. So it would never exist to me. It's like... But you love like, Kid Rock's big ass honky tonkin' steakhouse. I mean, oh, you're wearing... Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. Why would I ever want to take a taxi? I'm never leaving the fucking joint, okay? <laughs> 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 you also love getting covid yeah, over and uh, over yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of good to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh -huh. a, it's a daredevil. Like, let me see how many times I can get it and survive. That is, uh, that is actually a huge deal with the guy specifically who owns that place. Like, he's, uh, he's like a big asshole. I mean, obviously, he's a big <laughs> asshole. That's obvious, right? But uh, yeah, yeah that's Kid like Rock or like his like regional brand manager, his business partner. Yeah, Kid Rock and his business partner have made. A lot of people mad or happy, I guess, depending on, you know, which type of guy you are. But that's, uh, yeah, for the, the, whole, the whole downtown shutdowns, which, of course, never really happened in earnest here at all, uh, which I know is very different from out there, at least. Um, yeah, that, that guy's a big piece of shit and uh, really wants people to come down there and get sick. And I think one of the cool things is a lot of people are obliging and are doing it. So that's interesting. <laughs> Anything you say, Kid Rock's business partner. Yeah. This guy sounds like a guy up our alley. We love our nefarious uh, corporate uh, mm -hmm. uh, greed mongers. So I, I want to know yeah. more about this guy. Yeah, Can he owns a lot of that shit. Can I seg into, like, you know, there's talk about just real quick COVID and, like, you know, Santa photo ops. Mm. Uh, how, you know, how is that going to work in this time or whatever? And I think they've actually cracked it at one of the restaurants. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Scott? No. Okay. So there's a restaurant at the mall, at the Opry Mills, uh, called Aqu the, hey, let me look. It's called uh, Aquarium Restaurant. Yes. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Okay. Loved the name. And I looked this up too and I was like, there's got to be more, right? No, it's Aquarium Restaurant. Aquarium Restaurant. It's owned by Landry's. Obviously, yeah, and our buddy Tillman Fertitta, one of our, our favorite nefarious corporate mm -hmm. weirdos. Um, and it's it, it kind of looks like cool here. Let me see if I can I'll bring this up. You know, it kind of looks Rainforest Cafe-ish. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me, I'll share the screen here. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so you can get a, definitely like a it. cousin, you know, there's a lot of rainforest cafes or sort of a couple dozen. There's like four aquarium restaurants. Yeah. Yes. So like you go, oh, this is kind of cool. The ceiling looks cool. There's big tanks We're with fish. Coral reef world. Here. Um, so let me show you a picture of how they've figured out how to crack the issue with, uh, having kids meet Santa. And here's what they landed on. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Santa is in the tank <laughs> with the fish in a full Santa suit and the kids just go up to the tank and wave at him. He does have oxygen. He does have oxygen. Yes. He's not yeah. He's not holding his breath. And gloves. And Santa's white gloves and suit. He's just in the regular yeah. suit. It's not a, a Santa fied scuba suit. It's just the, the cloth and the wool. Yeah, it looks yeah. like an accident. Yeah. <laughs> he fell in. He's try he's tr it looks like he's saying help. <laughs> Kids, please, if you want another please. Christmas. If you uh, ever want to so meet Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on the official, on the website, it says, mail your letter to Santa and keep a close eye on the aquarium tank. You may see him swimming with our fish. Dude, ruining your, your letter. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! I guess this one I uh, didn't didn't read it. Uh, I'll just get you some socks. How about that? Uh, I, now it, I will say they have figured out Santa to keep Santa safe. Mm. Um, but the restaurant is just open and it's also a buffet, so <laughs> <No>! <laughs> Santa will be safe. Wow! I've so I've eaten at that aquarium restaurant a couple of times. Oh boy! Um and. 
it ain't good, boys. It ain't that. <laughs> it ain't. It ain't too too good. Um, oh, no, never, no. But uh, the the rainforest. It's it's as good as Rainforest Cafe, right? Which m- many more people have had. Um, it's 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 quite bad food. It's on the level of. I regret bringing up zoos twice because it sounds like that's the only place I've ever been. This guy fucking loves the zoo. It's like zoo food, which <laughs> is it's it's like forty to fifty percent more expensive than it should be and like 40 to 50 percent less good than it should be so like even french fries kind of suck and they cost nine dollars that's basically the the realm of aquarium except with it with a bonus which is that it's mostly seafood which is already way more expensive than it should be at most chain restaurants so i mean you you can really legitimately sit down at the aquarium and with four people which is what i would have been doing with myself my wife my two children you legitimately could sit down at that restaurant and eat, I mean, uh, like forty dollars worth of food for a hundred and thirty dollars. I mean, it's it's not at all difficult to do that type of shit there, and it fucking stinks. But the fish are very cool. Um, yeah, and okay, okay. and that's the, the fish Tillman look- for Tito promise. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 aquarium is like really well done, as far as I know. I'm not an aquarium guy. I'm a geologist, as we established earlier. <laughs> really but true. it's um, the, one of the things there is we went somewhat recently, like after the big flood that caused them to refurbish the whole mall, and the waiter there told us s- somewhat credibly, I feel that because the place was so flooded, they were not able to get in and rescue any of the animals. So by the time they got back, there was one remaining, and it was the one that had eaten all of the other fish. (laughs) Oh, my God. In the aquarium. I mean, it sounds somewhat apocryphal, but also I know it was flooded for a really long fucking time. So that makes sense. Sure, yeah, that's what happens. It's it's that one. It's not like he killed himself. Like he was, you know, he, he didn't. He didn't let, I mean, he didn't. He was in there for a long time. Right. Yeah. That one, the twelve foot tall fish. <laughs> <laughs> he ate Santa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my wow. god, that's incredible. Uh, um, yeah. I, the yeah, the, we well, there's also there were mermaids. I think they do that. Right? Did you see mermaids at the aquarium restaurant? I don't think I've seen the mermaids in there. I've seen the people who clean, so they go in to clean. It's big enough that you do go in to clean it, right? Um, So that is kind of fun. That's, to me, the entertainment equivalent of a mermaid because you're sort of like, there's not very much you can, I mean, you can kind of like, I mean, we're people, right? We're not fish. We can kind of move our arms a little bit, but that's pretty much it. I mean, otherwise, she might as well be cleaning a rock while she's in there. I don't know. Two birds with one stone. Yeah. Well, why not? And, and they have done. to hold their breath, or there's like hidden oxygen like uh, tanks where they can take a oh. quick breathe. And Oh, that because oh, I was concerned. You watch a video and you're like, this is too much time. Are they trained in, is it, are they trained in like anti-torture? Methods, oh. how else are they under I, here so long? Yeah, Wait I think they people, have to train the, a lot. It says on the website, people are always asking us about our mermaids. Click here for fun facts about what it takes. Oh, and then it's uh, it's like job, like they tell you if you want to work this job. Uh, and, and then, a, and then a, not a link, but it says go to the restaurant and fill out an application if you mm-hmm. want. Uh, wow. Yeah, you have 50 yard butterfly stroke time, swim 200 yards, timed underwater endurance evaluation. There's also a performance evaluation in the exhibit. Yeah, um, wow. Now and it says it... what kind of... Oh, sorry, Jason, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it does make a point to say the mermaids are not all scuba dive certified. <laughs> <laughs> That's huh. a little alarming. And then it tells you what you would have to swim with, and there's a big list of fish, like uh, a, a butterfly fish, assorted tangs, a look-down jacks, and tessellated eels. <laughs> okay, somebody was having a little bit of fun in the website copy room. Come on, they're, those aren't real. That's not real. <laughs> Such thing as a test. Eels can't be tessellated. Come on. That's yeah. outrageous. <laughs> I, for Tillman Fertitta creation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the. Yeah, Tillman Fertitta uh, came up last year in our downtown Disney ordeal, the owner of the Rainforest Cafe and ma- many other restaurants. So I think Bubba Gump's. Too, and I, I didn't have I didn't want to go down a big rabbit hole here, but I was just like, I know it's been kind of a year for Tillman Fertitta, and things have been rough for him with the the Houston Rockets. Uh, uh, I forget what exactly, but I was I, I just have here three 
random recent headlines about this this man and this great restaurant tour. Uh, Tillman Fertitta supporting Trump, leading to revolt among Rockets players. Rockets owner, this is from March, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta is the worst type of boss. And then uh, over the summer, Rockets Tillman Fertitta's family has deep mob ties. <laughs> Things just get better and better with this dude. Huh. Yeah. That's, uh, I didn't know that he owned Landry's, although I, of course, have heard as well. I mean, the player dissatisfaction with him, I think, is, I mean, maybe a little convenient given what the other 29 billionaire owners must be like. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just like slightly, they're 1% quieter, but yeah. all pieces of shit. Yeah, I think maybe you go in there blind a little bit on those guys. But I do know that, I mean, his fortune has decreased substantially as a result of the pandemic and all that. And that's that's very understandable. I didn't know that he owned Landry's, um, which, like you said, owns the aquarium. And uh, what, what else? There's there's a bunch of it. He also owns Claim Jumper, which is in Opry Mills as uh, well. Yeah. Um, which I actually liked. But now I've, I haven't been in a couple years, but now I feel like I've soured on based on his... Uh, Mm. on his uh, associate not, not like there's a good restaurant tour i guess i should support but i thought the restaurant was pretty good i did one uh, like a year ago i thought it was like the worst restaurant i've been to in the oh, recent no! past <laughs> yeah might have just been mike's might have just been the uh au jus sandwiches but uh <laughs> that's any indication i have affection for it but i wouldn't recommend it yeah <laughs> i like it there's one right over here by the warner brothers lot in yeah, an office building. That's the one. Yeah, in the the TBS headquarters. We and should say TBS. also that the TNN headquarters used to be on this campus. Remember the Nashville Network? Mm, um, sure. They used to broadcast. That's why Family Feud broadcasted from the with the special guests, the Stadler brothers, bringing us back to the beginning. Uh, TNN, the Nashville Network, became. I remember it mainly for showing Dallas reruns. Mm-hmm. Um, then it became Spike TV, where it mainly showed Mansers reruns. Then it became the Paramount Network, where it mainly uh, collapsed and died. I think mm. it had Bar Rescue. It's got Bar as Rescue well. rerun. Yeah, mm. that's because I keep wanting to watch Bar Rescue, and then I'm like, where is it? What's it streaming on? All oh, right, the, the one that you can't get to, the one with the content moat. Never mind, I will never watch Bar Rescue. Mm-hmm. Well, the great thing about Bar Rescue here is that uh, if you want to pirate Bar Rescue, which I would never recommend doing, um, if you wanted to do that. For some reason, Bar Rescue has completely fucked up on TV Database. This is one of the things that gets up my ass all the time. (laughs) TV Database on Bar Rescue is fucked because they kept doing this shit where they would say, this is part three of season two when it was actually part one of season four and all of the episodes overlap and you can't get the fucking episodes because nobody knows what fucking season it is. (laughs) It's a nightmare. Some seasons were 10 episodes long and other seasons were like 80. It makes no sense. Yeah, that's annoying. That's my bar rescue rant of the day. <laughs> I I appreciate hearing such a, a niche, but that that would absolutely <laughs> bother me. And and you're not alone. And I guess there's multiple ways that trying to watch bar rescue is trouble. Yes, I think he wouldn't. John would be furious about all of this. This season is only eighty minutes long. Or 80, <laughs> the one's the one's ten episodes. One ends eighty. You're confusing people. <laughs> well, you can't stream it anywhere. <laughs> He'll talk with Trump about it, of course, because he's another Trump guy. <laughs> oh, he loves Trump. Trump. Uh, he never loves Trump. He interviewed him on his podcast. What? Oh, my God. Like, recently? Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Three oh, weeks yeah, ago. Like right before, <laughs> Three weeks yeah. ago, he sat down with him. Does that, he literally wow. posted, does anyone have any questions for the president? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I can't think of any. Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Excited for Taffer's Tavern. <laughs> what cocktails will you have on tap? <laughs> um, um, uh, the okay. Oh, I was gonna say the the Santa thing in the aquarium uh, was interesting when you uh, when you were talking about the how they had figured out how to meet Santa. I was like, oh, he's about to talk about uh, Bass Pro because oh. that's where I had seen. Uh, the Santa innovation with the big plexiglass shield was at Bass Pro, which right. around here is a is a massively big deal. The um, it is now an anchor store in Opry Mills. It, it wasn't always, uh, but now it is. It's one of I think it's the only store. No, it's one of two, if I remember correctly, that you can't get to from inside the mall. It has like a 
or it did have a separate entrance. Maybe now you can get in through the mall. Um, but it's this huge play. I mean, it's um, if you like look at the satellite of Opry Mills, you can see there are millions of boats out front. Like someone's going to the mall to buy a boat, which is very strange, but I guess probably happens. Um, but that's where the big, uh, I think that's where the, I saw the thing about the plexiglass. Um, and there's also the big Bass Pro shops, which we actually would be going to, I think, this holiday season uh, in Memphis, which is in the site of the old pyramid um, where the Grizzlies played for a time, but has it also has this weird kitschy appeal where people thought it was haunted um, or run by the mob and all this stuff, but it's a very cool um, I mean, literally just a big great glass pyramid on the Mississippi River and is now a Bass Pro Shops with I think the largest freestanding elevator in North America um, and we would go down there we've been there for the holidays once before and they always have a big uh, Santa thing and of course now we're not going to uh, do it, but that's sure, sure. our idea of a good time. It's going to a big bass. Pro. Not that we don't do anything outdoors, but it's a cool place. It's another thing that's like this, which is like a cool place to look at because somebody tried really hard to make it look like something and it mostly worked, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. I have you stayed told... at the hotel in yes. the pyramid? Yeah. We have stayed at the hotel a couple of times and it's like, I mean, you talk about theming. It is, it is impeccably themed as a wilderness lodge, like really, really nicely done on the inside. And it's only... The hotel itself is only three levels, um, and the re- I mean because obviously the re- it's a pyramid, so you can only go up so high on the fucking thing. But so yeah. it's, wilderness um, lodge in a pyramid, this is great. It's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Um, they have they have like little crocodiles in there, and of course, I mean all of the c- camo shit you could ever want to barf on. Um, <laughs> but you know, Memphis itself is a really great place to visit, and so we would go down there um, and actually. Uh, my wife um, did get uh, roped into uh, buying a uh, bu- buying a room that came with a um, I'm trying to think of the way to phrase it where we, we got a discount on a room for this year last year um, if we sat through a timeshare presentation and this is something that I, I would never have done um, and she did because she was like, we're going to come here anyways. It's so much fun. The girls love coming here for the holidays. They do Christmas so big here. We'll see Santa. We'll do all this fun stuff. We get these gift cards and we get a discount on the room. It's perfect. Of course, we're not going to buy anything. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. But okay, we've got a year to do it. Um, and then this year happened. And I guess it's just like money down the <laughs> toilet now. <laughs> oh, jeez, uh, no. Because they're not going <laughs> to let me cancel, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Never. If they have some of your money. Yeah, yeah yeah um oh geez um yeah we've the the this came up recently i've been curious about this pyramid but never done the deep dive uh we were asking for examples of like crazy epicotish architecture recently and somebody brought this up and i was like oh this is an episode for sure and you you're confirming this more um, oh yeah gotta check oh out yeah this pyramid. do that on your branson loop go there oh, yeah uh get some ribs um and hang out at the the big the big pyramid it's a fucking hoot man it's wow. really cool well wow. either do we do wait until COVID is over to do the loop or do we just go do it right now because everything's <laughs> right you could probably do a lot of this couldn't we be cheap it would, everything would be cheap mm-hmm. yeah it would essentially be no different everyone else is doing it um, out here, <laughs> so there would be no disruption in service. Yeah, I you could definitely. I think my game plan is to low bar the Ferrar family, and <laughs> I will use their credits. So they're like, "Well, we don't lose all the." He's. It's a bad mm. offer, but at least we don't lose everything. <laughs> that, yes, that would be great, and and you know, and then maybe you actually do want to buy the timeshare. I mean, we don't know. I mean, it could be a great deal. Like it could be anything. The timeshare. You well, know? I mean, we know for a fact it's an investment. <laughs> Pass that down to your kids. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, um, I we, we we've been going a while, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. But I have I have one more thing that uh, like a truly unique experience that can only be found in the Opry Mills Mall, and I, I'm I'm excited to share with you guys. Uh, um, so that you know, many as as we've established, many of the great uh restaurant slash entertainment brands are in opry mills you got your dave and busters there too a chili's and a chewy's uh uh ev- everything you could want <laughs> um but there there's also a uh a madame tussauds um these are fairly common they're around here you have the the added specificity of uh, uh country music you've got your kid rock wax figure not his crooked business partner yet but hopefully someday. 
Uh, um, but you know, so it's more, uh, more, uh, country influenced, a uh, group of wax figures you can go see. Um, and that includes a recent, uh, rising country star, Darius Rucker of Hootie and the Blowfish. And now recently, uh, a, a big country star. Um, so there is a Darius Rucker wax figure. Uh, what's the big deal? You ask, you just take a picture with him that there's, there's a myriad of those who cares. Uh, not so fast. This is the first ever uh, wax figure that includes uh, uh, screen mapping technology. <laughs> uh, uh, this is a thing that's, you know, in theme park world a lot. You, you put a projection show on the castle uh, uh, or, you know, I think I guess there's Disney characters where you project onto their face, but not deployed by Madame Tussauds until Darius Rucker. And uh, so Darius Rucker comes to life, talks to you, and tells you about the process that goes into making a wax figure. Uh, and this, th- we'll put these on Twitter. This will have more impacts, I think, to look at than to hear about. But you guys just need to see the progression here. Uh, um, so, you know, here's, oh uh, here's regular stuff. That's just, that's Darius and wax Darius. Yeah, that'll uh, make sense to my... Yes, so far, yes. Still here he very is, accurate. Uh, here he is being sculpted, wow. and it's a little, you know, creepy, of course, but not, you know, nothing, nothing out of the what ordinary. What a crazy talent by the sculptor. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a very good looking. I mean, I feel like Madame Tussauds recently are, are, are pretty impeccable. I don't knock mm-hmm. their work. But then we start getting into the screen. <laughs> Um, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, here is Darius watching with mm. uh, some skepticism, uh, uh, oh. a, a oddly brightly lit version of himself. He seems like scared of his own visage, I would like, say. Uh, he looks like when Jimmy Kimmel did Carl Malone. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it's good. Like blackface Jimmy Kimmel. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> um, it's that is very unnerving. It's uh yes, or the or the Crank Yankers puppet version. Yes, he looks like a he looks like a Crank Yanker puppet. So what does this look like without the screen? Oh is my it whoa! Just a, hold on. <laughs> do it. Go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Here's. <laughs> oh, oh no! It's like cats. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Very good description. Uh, here he is being made. Here's like all of there's like a bunch of storyboards, like different expressions that Darius Rucker can make, and they all look so alarmed. It looks like these are all like figures that have come to life inside the computer and they want out. They're begging to be killed. <laughs> um, and, and all of this made, by the way, not for nothing, on a Mac with a full size toolbar that does a dock that does not disappear when you mouse away from it. <laughs> I, that's a huge oversight to your productivity. I mean, you're taking up a full 10% of the screen. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's that that's massive. Point. No one's adjusted that size. It's only basic apps on there. That's crazy. Yeah, and you got updates to do in the App Store. And they're only wow. using, like, PDFs and QuickTime Player. This is being achieved with the most basic Mac technology. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, actually, now that you point that out. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes, yeah, it all, it all yeah, adds up. Look at his crooked mouth on this one picture. It's got, like his mouth is trying to escape his face. Oh, man. Uh, then we Oof. keep going. This one's oh, very no. disturbing. <laughs> I think this is part of a progression where the, like his skin tone is being painted on. So like he's blank and then like his texture is being filled in like an hourglass and it's very uh, upsetting. And then... Now we get into some very creepy, this is just the most ghastly thing. Um, here he's poking behind some, up from uh, somebody's back, and now the full thing. No! <laughs> no. Uh, anyone feel free to describe it in your eyes. This to me, it just looks like Darius Rucker got crushed by a cartoon steamroller. So his head yep. is just perfectly pancaked, like splayed all the way out. His head is three feet wide. Um, it looks a lot like recently Second Gate addressed big Dick Tracy character Little Face. Yeah, um, it's like a Cronenberg body horror to me. Yeah, it's, it's this is like, the thing. Yeah, yeah, the thing. Yes, exactly. Like the thing. It kind yeah. of looks like that CGI image of like, well, here's how the human body could be sculpted if the human body evolved to survive car crashes and it's just the most hideous looking thing you've ever seen 
Oh, those yeah. monster creatures. Yeah, yes, the monster absolutely. creatures. Yeah. I mean, it gives us a preview, I guess, of if you took our head skin and unraveled it completely, but left the face mm-hmm. attached. Uh, I guess there would be some disturbing results. Um, yeah. And then, and then, just one more where he looks like. Ah! A- like a Come ghoul. On. <laughs> what? Like from the haunted mansion. He looks like a singing bust. Whoa. But it's now just... hold on. That's the magic mirror from Shrek. That's the magic mirror <laughs> that talks yes. to Lord Farquaad. <laughs> um we'll we'll get these all up on the Twitter so you know what we're screaming about. But I Wait I a minute, I th- I think what happened on they're they're on Windows now. I think this person maybe opened a link that said can you tell the difference between this picture and this other picture? <laughs> you have to wait 50 seconds or else you can't. And then they got scared. I think this is the scary face. They opened a link in their email. They shouldn't have opened up. That's what this is. This is not, uh, mm. this, yeah. this is uh, not real. This is a this virus is, yeah, being is distributed a, as we speak. Yeah, a virus email. Is what I, was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will tell you what is real. Uh, millions of people across the world dream this face every night. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you see when you die of COVID. You get a quick flash of this, <laughs> yeah. and then that's all she wrote. Um, I yeah, yikes! Truly, truly disturbing stuff there. Only at Opry Mills. Uh, well, um, I, they also that they did this this gag. They did this technique, like the first wax figure that talks to you, and the excitement of this has resulted in a sum total of you know 147 views on youtube like the making of like no one's looking into this this is not a story i had to go digging to find it's like it's like they don't want people to know about uh cgi little face darius rucker well it also costs like an exorbitant amount of money (laughs) to go in to that place am i am i wrong for thinking that i I mean is it it's really a lot of money yeah hmm um, I don't. Yeah, it, I'm not sure. It used to be a bookstore in that slot there, which, I mean, I, you know, at a tourist mall, I guess it makes sense that that wouldn't be the most highly trafficked place. But the truth is, is it's also a mall mall for the Nashville area. I mean, the other malls um, that we have around here, there's uh, Cool Springs and Green Hills, which are really, really like the high end malls, um, and they're also pretty far out of the way for most Nashvilleians. Um, and then there are some older malls as well that are like borderline dilapidated. Um, and so Opry Mills is like the default mall. In addition to being this tourist trap, it is also sort of the default mall for a lot of people here as well. So having a massive Madame Tussauds, uh, operation in there that costs, I'm going to say a hundred dollars. I don't know. It's something crazy to go in. Maybe. Um, it's, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's, it's very strange to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big. Use of space. I also just something just occurred to me while as I continue to stare at this little face Darius Rucker. It's a little face with a perfectly puffed out round, you know, like rest of it around. Is this showing us what Hootie would look like as an actual blowfish? Oh, wow. (laughs) I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I don't think there's any better description than that. It's the only explanation. I've Um, I've looked up the price. It's it's I'm sorry. It's twenty five dollars if you walk up, which quite frankly might as well be one hundred dollars for how quickly I would not buy the ticket to go in and look at weird Hootie. But go see Hootie, the actual blowfish. Uh, um, Do you I guess as a closing that like, do you miss this place? I don't know if you've been or if any aspect of it is available to go see or if you've done the uh, did you say you did the Bass Pro Distance Santa or are considering it? Oh, I will not. And I will not be going to a mall anytime soon. I can't imagine sure. uh, going there. I mean, the, you know, the mall, and, you know, I mentioned this earlier. People are nostalgic um, for Opryland and that's fine. I I kind of believe that nostalgia is poison. Um, but I also know that we are all sort of poisoned by it to one extent or another. Um, and you just kind of have to deal with it. I, and you know, I didn't have any memories with it. So the fact that it's a mall now, um, as a man in my thirties with children, um, who gets motion sick, the mall honestly serves me better than the theme park would. Now it doesn't have to be, not everything's for me. That's fine. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I would go to the mall more. And my wife and I did. You know, we would go see movies there. It had a huge 
mm-hmm. still does, and I'm sure people are in there watching fucking Transformers Four being <laughs> brought out to theaters again, or Tenet, or whatever. The f- I don't know what's going on in theaters right now. Whatever the hell it is, yeah. Whatever the hell it is, you know, people are still going in there right now. I'm sure. Um, but we would love to go in there and see a movie and go to Dave and Buster's and blow $20, um, on a phone game that's on a 50 inch, uh, LCD (laughs) screen now for some reason. Um, we would love to go down and and look at the, the Build-A-Bear thing and say, well, we're not getting our kids that, but it's cute. Or, um, all of the, the little, um, the little kiosks in the mall with the last time I was there, the kiosks were the following. You had the thing you throw at the wall and splats. Um, mm-hmm. They have this new thing. It's called like dragon's breath, which is it's like these little um, snacks that you put in your mouth and then it looks like you're vaping and they sell them to kids. Um, that's a great <laughs> what? <thing. laughs> it's they're like these little puff balls that I think it's obviously not dry ice. It wouldn't be that. It's like whatever the safe version is of something you can eat that gives that sa- it's like cold, but you it like exhales water vapor or whatever. Okay. So you walk around, you see high schoolers or I guess middle schoolers would be the one surprise. Obviously high schoolers vape all the time, but like middle schoolers or, or children going like, isn't this cool? And they're like eating a snow cone or something. Um, uh, so, you know, I miss seeing that stupid shit. Um, I miss the food court, which I want to talk about the food court before we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please. By all means. Uh, what is, I mean, this is what I remember from being in the food court, and I think it actually has changed since I went last, but I'll tell you guys what it is, and you and you tell me if you have any favorites or things that you hate. Um, there's the uh, the Sarku or Sakio Japan, which is like the flat top teriyaki style place. You mm-hmm. pay a dollar for double meat. Okay. okay. That's, mm-hmm. that's one that's pretty good. Uh, there's like a smoothie place and a salad place, but come on. There's a Burger mm-hmm. King. There is a Sbarro. Mm. Uh, there is a, I think it's a TGI Fridays and a Chili's 2, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> there, oh. like across from each other, competing right. for the exact same demographic of guy. It just depends on which <laughs> of them is a 15-minute wait and which is a 45-minute wait. <laughs> um, there was the uh, the always mysterious... Um, Chinese, typical Chinese place, but then the one that they inexplicably say is a Louisiana style, like the Cajun place that serves the same food as the Chinese place. It just has a different name on it. I don't yes. know if that's right. something that's Fusion common out man. west. Fond memories of of those in malls I grew up going to. Yes, very. I don't understand the bourbon chicken. Bourbon chicken, like, yeah. <laughs> which uh, which one is the good? The bourbon chicken, you know. Oh, I just saw um, that as one of the only things left in a dead mall video I was watching. It's like the only really? slot out of twelve in a in a food court in some decaying like Ohio mall. Wow. Yeah, that's I, that's all I can remember being there in the food court. There was then claim jumper. There was a Moe's burritos place mm-hmm. in there. Uh, the Moses aquarium, is very the airporty, right? Like, does is anyone is anyone done Mo Moe's isn't good, is it? I think I've done it once, and I don't have any memory of what it was. <laughs> yeah, good or bad. Their their main thing is a is a it's a big burrito called the Home Wrecker, which I think is just too cute. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, you know, I'm not that interested in that. Um, there's a Mexican place. There's a a fascist barbecue joint called Mission Barbecue. <laughs> Um, oh, there's a there's a macaroni grill that's pretty good. Yeah, it's a it, the barbecue place is one of the places that you will go, and it's like it's got the American flag that's been palette swapped to uh, look like Terminator Future or whatever that shit is. <laughs> um, but the the best place there is the Bavarian Beer House. Oh, which, which is, is like a, huge, massive. It's massive. Yeah, it's 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 totally huge. They have the live German music in there. It's like a beer hall with these long communal tables. Um, now that's. Now that's good eats there. I like that a lot. Hmm. That's, that's gotta. Be there's legit. a place. Yeah, there's a place like that in Vegas where Jason got way too high and ran out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid either the waitress with the test tube shots or the band with the hat that moved uh, was coming for me. There was <laughs> so. a woman. There was a woman who would paddle you for a dollar. Whoa! And he was really. Jason was really worried she was coming for him. That she had a. There was a paddle coming for his ass. Oh my! Tillman God. Fertitta quote Tillman Fertitta. Yeah. That was a Tillman Fertitta quote. I, 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 honestly, wow. all comes together. Yeah, uh, uh, that all sounds. I mean, that sounds good. I'm a big Chili's fan of all the garbage. Oh places. really? Yeah. So that would wow. probably be my choice of those. Well, you, I would like the the beer hall sounds like the most fun though. Sure. So you're thinking chicken crispers, I guess. Yeah, chicken crispers for sure. Uh, I like the big platter with the ribs, and you can get like a baked. You can get like 
six different horrible things. Yeah. Like from around the menu. Yep. Yep. Um, that would be good. I uh, it'd be um it's it I'm I'm imagining now like what if I did go do a like a curbside pickup awesome blossom but I I'm confident that my wife would not join me in that and my baby is a baby so he would not <laughs> um so me just sadly peeling off bit after bit of a would that be it depends on my uh. attitude if i make it sad it's sad but if i make it the coolest thing i've done for the entire quarantine maybe it is yeah that doesn't sound that sad to me <laughs> that doesn't sound sad i don't know no, what I is mean, this chili's is inherently sad so once you're there <laughs> It doesn't matter. It's all good. I mean, yeah. it's going to be ice cold by the time you get at home. Yeah, because the closest you're one in is in car. Encino. Scott, yeah. the closest one is in Encino, I believe. I mean, yes, I know, but I can get back and forth pretty fast. Uh, I mean, it's pretty deep Encino. It's pretty West Encino, yeah. but there's no traffic anywhere. So um, now that is not that far from where my baby goes to the doctor. So I could, the next time he's got to go to the doctor, drop them off, sit in the car, and eat an awesome blossom by myself, oh, and then yeah. go pick them up. That's See great. how far I get. Where all... could you bring the awesome blossom in the waiting room? I'm sure they'd appreciate that, and then take off my <laughs> mask in this pediatric <laughs> care lobby. I'm eating <laughs> here. Awesome A lot of pediatricians in. have different sections. They have the well section and the sick section and the awesome blossom <laughs> to go section that you have to kind of sit in there. It's next to the yeah. aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if I still got a view, if I can watch the fish, <laughs> now, yeah, this, then bad. this is the this is the Opry Mills experience uh, condensed. I feel you're absolutely mm -hmm. right, man. Oh, beautiful! This is great. Uh, uh, any any closing thoughts or words of wisdom about this 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 area, this theme park, but also the? I mean, it became the mall uh, we, yeah. as we knew it would. Well, but yeah. we neglected to mention when they opened the Grand Ole Opry House, the big venue they built for the Grand Ole Opry. Who was in attendance and sat down and played a couple's ditties on the piano? President Richard Nixon himself. That's right. That's uh, right. Uh, of course, yeah. uh, on, on the Disney Dish on Jim and Len's show, they had a, a historian from the Smithsonian on recently who talked about uh, Nixon's love of these theme parks. And he did want to go to the opening of Disney World, but could not because of the optics, because he was about to withdraw a ton of troops from Vietnam, and they thought it would just look too bad. <laughs> while he was wow. on, like, while he's ride. He, While Wee. he's on the ride. But in his place, he sent H.R. Haldeman with a flag that flew over the White House, the first one Nixon ever gave out. <laughs> wow. To present to Roy O. Disney. Haldeman, of course, ended up doing time for the Watergate break <laughs> Huh. I've never heard that one. That's bonker. H Ladies and gentlemen, H.R. Haldeman. Haldeman. <laughs> he was not on that opening day special. No. <laughs> um, I, I was aware that we missed that fact, and I, I will continue to do. I, I, uh, um, I, I think maybe Mr. Nixon will play us out of this episode. <laughs> that uh, oh, that became my plan as, uh, as I started thinking here. Uh, um. But uh, uh, Nixon, notwithstanding, any anything we want to, any last things we want to say to to this wonderful campus, uh, the many things to do over the years. Hmm. Uh, I just, I am. I would have liked to have visited Dua Diddy City. That's all I'd like to say. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I. I guess. I. You know what? Nothing lasts forever. Is the way I feel about Opryland. You know. Um. It had its moment in the sun. Would it still be there today if a couple of incompetent CEOs hadn't decided that there was more money in this weird land grab or whatever they were doing at the time? I don't know. I mean, if it were around now, it would be hitting pretty hard times, right? I mean, like yeah. everything else is. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I guess that's in the interim another 25 years or, or whatever. It could have had some some good times. But so be it. We got a Dave and Buster's now. Move on. <laughs> you know, we you can go in there and do the Fruit Ninja on a big iPad. What the hell else do you want? You think the fucking rock and roller coaster is better than Fruit Ninja on a big iPad? I, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. Get with the times. Get down to Opry Mills. Turn in your tickets for a stuffed bear. Get some COVID. Uh, <laughs> jump on the trampoline for $20. Go to Madame Tussauds for $100. I, you know, have a good time. See a jolly old elf in a fish tank.
(laughs) (laughs) Drowning Santa. Um, They've got it all at the Opry Mills. Uh, Beautiful closing words. Uh, With that, Jesse Farrar, you survived podcast the ride. Uh, What a blast. Thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, And hey, let's exit through the gift shop. Or is there anything you would like to plug? Yeah, um, you mentioned at the top, um, I do a show with my friend Mike Hale called Your Kickstarter Sucks. Um, We talk about all the shitty stuff on Kickstarter, actually pretty similar to stuff that would be in any gift shop, um, except for most of the time it never makes it out of the idea phase. So if you like goofing on uh, silly products, that's a good place to go. Um, We've also uh, teamed up with my friend Chris James, a great comedian, uh, to do the new show on Stitcher Premium. It's called Good Morning, Good Morning. Um, it's a little bit different uh, than YKS. It's, 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 we're playing radio hosts, and we've got some uh, very funny uh, comedian friends on to do some great bits. Uh, we're really excited about uh, doing that. It comes out um, pretty much as soon as this episode comes out. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good timing on that. We're really excited. And then uh, I do a stream uh, pretty much every night of the week uh, with my friends Stefan Heck and Rob Wisman. Um, it's called the Go Off Kings, and we go on there and we play games uh, pretty badly most of the time. Uh, but we have a good time and goof off, you know, c- kind of like this. If you like goofs and good boys, I think that's a good place to find yourself over there on Twitch at the Go Off King stream. So uh, thanks for having me, guys, a lot. I really uh, appreciate it, and I, I love the show. So it was nice to be on. Oh, geez. Thank, oh, you, thank so you so much. So much fun. Yeah, yeah. Great, great area. Yeah, uh, Go Off King's hitting uh, Fruit Ninja at... Um... Uh, Dave and Buster's anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, we're we're actually we have to do a lot of practice before we're able to get up to the fruit ninja level. We're sort of like we're on the like uh, starting the stream on time, making sure the system turns on, everything's plugged in, the controller is charged, and then and then we'll get to the big boy stuff like fruit ninja on the iPad. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, uh, awesome. Well, th- thanks so much for being here, Jesse. Uh, as for us, we've got, uh, uh, you could check us out on all your favorite social medias at Podcast The Ride. And for three bonus episodes every month, visit Podcast The Ride, the second gate at patreon.com slash podcast the ride. Uh, and now, as promised, here to play us out, uh, the at the time about to be. Uh, only five months away from resigning the presidency. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but in happier times, uh, opening uh, the new Grand Ole Opry at the, at the future site of uh, um, uh, Frightening Hootie and the Blowfish Wax figure. Uh, here now, the piano you will hear is uh, Richard Nixon uh, to say goodbye to Opryland USA and goodbye to this episode. Thanks, everybody, so much for listening. Dick? How weird is it to look at, by the way? I don't think I knew he played. <laughs> oh. he's, he's mainly blocked by a head in the audience. The video says low resolution preview. He had the angriest face I've ever seen. He was like, you will, God bless America. <laughs> So should we all A bunch of glaring people in thick glasses Tucker Carlson's dad Great job, Dick. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Mike Carlson, Jason Sheridan, Scott Gardner, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.